Yeah. As Judge Billings would say, it's six o'clock <laughs> by my watch. Yeah. Um, so just before I read out the warning, um, before the select board meeting, we have a special town meeting. So this operates just like town meeting. It is only for the legal voters of the town. I think there are a few people here who are not. Um, so you won't be allowed to participate in, in this part. Hopefully it'll be brief. The citizens of the town of Woodstock who are legal voters in the town of Woodstock, county of Windsor, state of Vermont, are hereby warned to meet at the Woodstock Town Hall in said town on the 21st day of May 2019 at 6 p.m. to act upon the following articles. Um, and just like town meeting, these have to be moved and seconded before we can discuss them. So Article 1, to see if the town will vote either or both of the exemptions listed below for the land and buildings known as the Simmons House, owned by the Ottaquichi Health Foundation for a period of five years. A, an exemption from all local property taxes, including local education, highway, and town general. And B, exemption from state education property taxes and to raise by property taxation a sum of money to pay the exempted amount to the appropriate entity. What is your pleasure on Article 1? I move both exemptions. Sally Miller. Well, second. All right, moved by Sally Miller, second by John Doton. Are there any questions or comments on Article 1? <coughs> Seeing none. We will vote on Article 1 as warned. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed nay. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes do have it. Article 1 is adopted. Article 2. To see if the town will vote either or both of the exemptions listed below for the land and buildings owned by the Woodstock Associates, known as Woodstock Recreation Center, for a period of five years. A, exemption from all local property taxes, including local education, highway, and town general and B, exemption from the state education property taxes, and to raise by property taxation a sum of money to pay the exempted amount to the appropriate entity. What is your pleasure on Article 2? I move Article 2. Moved by oh, Butch second. Sibley, second by John Doton. Uh, both exemptions, Butch? Yes. Thank you. Are there any questions or comments on Article 2? easy crowd tonight. Mm -hmm. All those in favor of Article 2 say aye. 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 Those opposed nay. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes do have it. Article 2 is adopted. Article 3 to act on any other business that may legally come before the special town meeting. Does anyone have anything else they need to bring up? If there is none, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Moved by Mary. Did you want to second that, Sally? I will. All in favor say aye. Aye. We are adjourned. And it's your meeting. <coughs> Thank you. Oh, let me pause for just a minute. Okay. Catch up. Put <coughs> out. Let me know when you're ready. I'm ready. You're ready? Mm-hmm. Okay. I'd like to call to order the... Uh, meeting of the uh, village the select board for this May 21st meeting uh, first of all I'd like to thank Mary my co-chair for uh, assisting in all the time that I was absent basking in the Sun and uh, I'll tell you there is a, there is a Sun it, it shines in Florida and I'd like to thank the rest of the board for everything while I was away you're welcome so, so Welcome thank you, back. Thank you very much. So uh, I'd like to ask the town manager now to give us a report on the Tassville covered bridge, the Tassville covered bridge damage, which occurred last night. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There's a third covered bridge in the state of Vermont that got whacked. That may ex the damage may exceed the value to be placed. But that's not our problem. I don't think. <laughs> so Tassville was hit last night. That will be a much easier fix, much quicker fix. And I would, if you'd like, I'll give you a rundown on the Lincoln Covered Bridge. Yep. Could you tell us what happened to Tassville, then? Got hit by somebody who was too tall. 
<laughs> I, that's... They had a trailer, same like, piece of equipment on a trailer, same, same sort of situation. And, so the Lincoln Cobble Bridge was hit with, the driver had a piece of landscaping equipment in the back of his truck and then put them up way too tall for a 10 foot opening. He got in and he drove clear through. I have never, ever, ever seen anything like it. Everybody else backs <coughs> out. He claims that he was afraid it was collapsing around him, but that took a lot of tenacity to break all those six inch by 10 inch X, X bracings collar ties, everything up, up above. And your estimated time to repair the Lincoln Covered Bridge is? Well, let me run down what has to happen. Let me talk about some pinch points in the schedule. Then when I tell you Christmas, eh, you might say, well, that's a lot of work has to be done. So the first thing I want to tell you about the Lincoln Covered Bridge is that we were able to secure the construction plans from the renovation back 1998, I think. So that will help our engineer develop plans for the rehab. There's no way that we can bend that out and have people decide amongst themselves what contractor A thinks is needed and what contractor B thinks is needed. We're going to have an engineer draw us up some plans. So we're advertising for an engineer now. And that person or firm will be responsible to create the renovation plans or the restoration, the repair plans. The, we will require a bid bond and a performance bond to make sure that the rehab is done and done right. What a performance bond does, for those of you not in the construction world, if we hired a company that went bankrupt halfway through, the, comp the insurance company writing the performance bond finds an equal competent <coughs> contractor to complete the project. We end up paying, but our insurance ends up paying. So since I segued into the insurance, we had, the town has that bridge on our schedule of insured property. So our bills will be paid by VLCT passive, VLCT passive goes after the insurance of the person driving. And do you include in those insurance costs manpower as well, that our town employees time? We can. I think we should because every time we have to repair something, we yeah. don't go forwards. We can do that. What else we have to do? We certainly did on the fence around the green. <clears throat> now that ended up taking close to a year and Ken and his guys and basically built a dummy wooden fence so it would look good while we waited. We can't do that here, it's closed. <laughs> so can we uh, charge for, I don't know, lost tourism dollars or something? Uh, I think Is that's good, no, not that I'm aware of. <laughs> no. um, so back to why <coughs> I think it's gonna take longer than we all want. This is not the time of year to be looking for a contractor. <laughs> Simple as that. It's, everybody's got the work lined up. Some of the bigger companies might be able to squeeze it in, but I do want to have, when we get our engineer, come up with a reasonable completion. <coughs> um, and I'd like to consider bonus and penalties. I'm not sure how our insurance feels about the bonus part, <coughs> but I don't really want a guy that's out there just dubbing around 20 hours this week and, and more than that. You know, it's, it's just not right. We want to 
move forth with and get it done. So I think the engineering will go pretty quick because we have the plans that will help a lot. In fact, the state, I think they had them to you within what, 36, 48 hours? Wow. <coughs> that will be a huge help. One of the people we will invite to bid is Wright Construction from Mount Holly. They, they did the handicapped access to the electric door, the concrete floor, all that rehab down here. And they did the rehab on the Lincoln Covered Bridge in 1998. So they do have some street cred with Covered Bridge. We don't know how bidding is going to go, but we do have some very able cover bridge contractors to look to, to at least invite <coughs> to bid. The people uh, who voted, what's the word on Alpine? Would they do a rehab partial, like a repair? Yes. So the people who built the Tassel cover bridge for us four or five years ago, they're interested also. We have some good companies that have worked for us who are interested bidders. And so that's why I say, you know, the Thanksgiving Christmas timeline, I couldn't sit here with a straight face and say, ah, oh, we'll have it done in the summer. I don't see it. <laughs> I don't see it. Um, we will do our best to move forth with and go as fast as we can while doing a quality job. And what's the extent of the damage on the Tesla bridge? I'm told about three or four thousand dollars. So that's not closed. <coughs> that's not closed. That's correct. And what's the status on the um, railings on River Street? Ken is hounding Springfield Fence, the other company that installed it, and he can tell you. Okay, can we? <coughs> can we tell you that? Are you talking about the fence? Yes. Okay. Yeah. And Stick to the agenda. You want me not to speak? Go, well, no, I'd like to no, Jill let's get it out of the way. Uh, they had to order the sections, and when they came in, they were going to schedule the actual work. So it won't be long? It shouldn't be, but. It's hard to promise when somebody else will get a job. <laughs> but we'll, 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 I can't say waiting for the fence pieces. So, um, anything else? Anything else? Well, so, can you like give us an update now on the road repairs for the April 14th and 15th rainstorm? Yeah, I'll actually give you some good news and go back to the July 1st, 2017 flooding that we finally got paid the federal share of those damages almost two years later. And that was pulling teeth. That was good. Pulling teeth. But we did get the money. We have yet to clean out all of the woody debris that's caught up in the girders of the two bridges on the Palm Fr Flat Road. And that is scheduled to, to be done by June 30th. We, are, we have basically $50,000 promised to complete those repairs. Uh, so the April 14th event, the governor is expected to request that that be a FEMA event. It meets all of the metrics in that there was over a million dollars of damage in Windsor County and so forth and so on. But you've got, correct me if I'm wrong, can't say, 75 road segments in Woodstock that all need to be repaired. Now do they need to be repaired? Every repair has to be documented. How long, how deep, how wide, how many cubic yards of gravel, what kind of stone, and that is very time consuming. 
Uh, so one of Ken's jobs that fell on him here, he cannot have a road segment on Peterkin Hill fixed until it's been documented. So the grader can't go out, the dump trucks don't roll until that's documented. Once the road is documented, then it can be move ahead and get repaired. We're doing um, the repairs ourselves the same way we did for the 2017 event because there's no promise of being paid yet. So he hadn't even finished, started motor grading the roads when this thing hit because there's no <coughs> frost in the ground. <laughs> but that's working its way out. Okay. Any questions on the board? I have none. No. Questions? Any well, questions? thanks for listening. <laughs> Any questions from you got Dave? Given the increase in traffic on um, like what I call a trailer park road, uh, is there any change necessary to our normal uh, maintenance uh, plan? I guess I'd have to ask him or Ken. I would say we'll see the grader more often, but not much more than once or twice extra. It will certainly deteriorate faster. And yes, it's rough now. I do want to see more speed patrols by the police, and I do want to see the speed cart out there. We own portable speed cart for a reason. It's portable. You put it where you need it. So if you travel that road, expect to see an officer and expect to see the speed cart flashing that little blue light at you if you're not being good. Somebody else had a question? Um, oh, I know that um, Haley Roy is here. <laughs> and she had some questions, and I know that Phil has answered them in saying that the bridge will not be repaired for several months. But, a year anyway. Phil, if she were to go near the Fletcher Road side of, that's Fletcher Road on yeah. the other side, and use that as a backdrop for her photos, Fine. With that, sure. so that does that give you a little hope? <laughs> Once the uh, engineer is awarded yeah. and they are able to assess the structural damage, can we entertain opening it to foot traffic? No. No. Why? No. That would be a, an insurance issue. Might be an yeah. insurance issue. Okay. Yeah. The it's something we could look into, though. I'll, I'll appreciate that. Yeah. Mm. Um, so, it wouldn't count. I would, it's a good question, though. I understand your, your date is in July. I would say hopefully by July we have a contractor. Mm -hmm. The town turns the bridge over to the contractor. They make the rules during construction. Mm -hmm. I don't see how their insurance would allow yeah. anybody. But like Bush said, we'll be happy to ask. Thank you. You can always get a raft, you know. I mean, we ought to get a raft of bills so we can get a raft of bills. There is, is going to be extra traffic on, the, on that road because there is. there's a lot there of people. already. Like, yeah. One more question. Sure. Right, uh, right down river from that bridge, is that a legal river crossing? There is no such thing. No. Okay. <laughs> there was a crossing there. There are no people who to. like to take a four wheeler or a jeep across, but there's not a legal crossing. Not legally. Right. Quick question: The two people who um, did damages to both yes. bridges are they going to are they going to be held responsible for anything, or is it just insurance that's going to take care of it? There will be tickets issued for over height and over weight on the Lincoln Bridge. I'm not sure what else, and they would come with points and fines. And I'm not sure from 
Sergeant Swanson is doing the Lincoln Covered Bridge and Chief Plish is doing the task film. I'm not sure what he's got planned. But there will be tickets, there will be points, and their insurance will <coughs> pay. And then they will get a very big increase in own insurance. Forever and ever. <laughs> they will pay. <laughs> Would you object to a zip line if that was? <laughs> <laughs> you go first. I'll be right behind. <laughs> Anything else from the board? Anything else from the board, Jill, Mary? I know. <laughs> okay. Thanks for the opportunity to fill everybody. All right. Thanks for the opportunity. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> so the next thing on our agenda is Green Mountain Horse Association trail usage usage for public. Road. Somebody here to speak on that? I don't believe they're here. They were just gave you the handout. Okay. With all the dates and yep. attached. Yep. Okay. Wow. Is this a normal thing? Yes. Yep. Yes. Yep. They're very active. Yeah. Yep. So They've never really been any trouble to us. You leaving, Matt? Okay. <laughs> I'm going to cover the boys. Okay, thing she's going to cover. Okay. Yes. Gotcha. All right. Oh, I, they're not up here. Do you want to bring one up? Uh, is his office open? Oh no, it probably is not. Sorry. Thank okay. you, Matt. I'll take care of it. Okay. So, Green Mountain Horse Association. Trail uses for our public roads. Um, we usually ask them to uh, put a notice in the paper when they're going to hold these rides in advance so that the public is notified that the roads will be used for the rides. Um, we do that yeah. regularly. With um, that condition, I make a motion we approve these rides, which are, um, which appear to me to be the same as they have been on former years, through the summer, ending it during foliage. A second motion. Motion's been made and seconded that we approve the Green Mountain Horse Association for the use of Woodstock Public Roads during the dates that they've asked. Uh, any further discussion? Do you have something to add here? No, just that they have to advertise yeah, they have the paper. Advertised. I'm sure they that's oh, they do. that. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? The ayes have it. You have it. So, okay. So the next thing on our agenda is the uh, interviews for Lister. Select Board, Cemetery Commissioner, and Town Auditor. So we will start with the Lister. Yes, Glenn Parent is yep. here. And Glenn is here. So Glenn, if you'd like to come up and introduce yourself to the board, <coughs> then here he is. <laughs> Hi. Um. Have a chair. I'm Glenn Parent. I live on uh, Methley Road. We built a couple houses. Um, I'm not really too familiar with what a lister does, but I know how to run a tape and I can talk to people with that. Being, you know, be fairly polite and everything and uh, compassionate and try to look at the overall picture of everything. I met with the listers a couple weeks ago and they kind of gave me a rundown on what they do. And I think it seems like I could work with those people. That sounds a, a pretty interesting situation. Okay, uh, may I ask a yes, question? Yes, go ahead. Um, your computer experience, Glenn, yeah. do you have significant computer? Well, I can get by on it. I would not call myself a computer person, but I have a little bit of common sense and. I could muddle my way through it, probably. Did you see how their, um, the operation goes, how they put information in and produce a report? Did they show you their 
Yeah, um, and it looks like after they gather the information and they kind of talk to each other about it, they get it all together and file it, and the state kind of makes a lot of the... That's right. So it's not actually dependent the on these people. The program sends yeah. you back information. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. Okay. Why do you want to do this job? Uh, it seems kind of interesting. It fits, I'm kind of semi-retired. fits my schedule. It, uh, yeah, plenty of free time to do this. Yeah. Yeah, okay. I don't know that it's free time. It's a job, isn't it? With hours. It is. But it's half-day job, so it would, it would kind of... And you have that time. Um, I understand they take several, t uh, they do so much education uh, to learn the different parts of the job. They said there were a lot of training courses mm. and stuff to do, so that would bring me up to speed on it fairly quick. What are your academic qualifications? Uh, graduated high school. I've been a mechanic my whole life. I wasn't planning on looking for a lister job, but a little, little change of pace. Mechanic work is kind of back breaking after a number of years, mm -hmm. so it might be a, something to settle into for a while. So does the idea of taking tech, studying and doing more um, word, number, this kind of stuff, how does that feel to you? Oh, uh, that doesn't bother me, because the mechanic part, with cars nowadays, it's, it's lots of work with the computer <coughs> and that type of stuff. I do have a question for the board. Yeah. So, if we appoint Glenn, because he seems enthusiastic and ready to learn, but, I'm sorry Glenn, I have to say this, but it's not directed at you, but, but Glenn is not qualified, so he will become qualified. And then, say something happens and Glenn can't do the job, w where do we stand then? Who, does the, who do the listers? Oh, they will report to the voters, so whatever term is left on the appointment, is only good until March at town meeting, <coughs> and people, if anybody really interested can stand for election. Right. So it seems like a good time to um, transition to, to go into it, see if you can do it, and then then you can stand for election. It's my understanding that the listers now were not overly qualified when they started, right? And they, they should be doing okay. Yeah. It's a job you learn. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Are we making appointments tonight? Uh, no. Oh, I think no. we'll talk it tonight. We'll wait. We'll take the session later and okay. figure everything out after we talk with you. all the people here tonight. So the next uh, appointments are for the vacancy uh, on the Board of Selectmen. This, like the listers, will be an appointment for the remaining of Sonia's No, uh, just until term. March. Till March. Till March. March. Til March, thank you. And um, then whoever we select has to run for the position and be elected in March. So. Um, and I think that's when her term officially expires. Yeah, I think so it that's the overlap in this instance be a three-year term right. at that point. So in this case, we have uh, Brad Lawrence, Brad and, Lawrence. And, um, Ray Bourgeois. and Ray Bourgeois. And Brad, uh, seeing how you're on top of my list, I'll, I'll ask you to come up and uh, sit in that hot seat and <laughs> tell us about... Uh, uh, hi, Brad. Hi, how are you? Good. So, I'm Brad oh, Lawrence. Sorry. I live on Charles Street. Um, I've, I'm a new resident here. I just moved in November. Um, came up here with my, my two little kids to make it our permanent home and saw that there was an opening and figured I'd throw my hat in the ring. Okay. What interested you about being on the board of selectmen? Well, I mean, it's a, this is a place where I'm putting down roots, um, plan to be here for probably the rest of my life, um, and want to raise my kids in a town that is going to stay, stay great and do what I can to keep it, keep things, you know, on the right track. Not that they're, not that they're off the right track, yeah, so I'm just understand. saying I, I like to uh, be able to have a little bit of input into the place where, where me and my family are going to be living. Mm -hmm. 
What experience do you have of um, volunteer work? Um, I've been volunteering with my church uh, mm -hmm. back in the Boston area um, for years. I've worked with the kids there. Um, uh, haven't started with the new church up here yet, but generally, um, mostly that. I did some work with um, kind of a young adult, you know, young college graduate mm -hmm. uh, volunteering program in the Boston area, working in various um, various projects, you know, helping out at um, ra road races and fundraising things and doing things like that. How old are your children? Uh, two and four. So welcome to Woodstock. Thank you. So you see a lot of this so far, talking about roads and budgets mm -hmm. and, and <coughs> have you any experience with some of the things that we've been already talking about? Uh, I've worked in the construction industry for um, 15 years now. Okay. Uh, I'm a graduate of Georgia Tech with a mechanical engineering degree. So I have a pretty good mechanical sense and um, I can visualize how things work very well. Um, Do you have experience with budgets? Just with the home budget and <laughs> managing all that stuff. Any other questions for Brad? I have none. I've I met Brad and we've talked a couple times in the last two weeks. So Mary was one of the first people to greet me when we moved to to Woodstock. We met her over at a Soulfully Good Cafe one day, and she was extremely nice. And uh, when I met her here at the town hall, she remembered my wife and kids' names, which pretty easy because my wife is also a Mary. So. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciated that. Well, that's yeah. nice. Good. So thank you for volunteering. For thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate you coming forward. Hey, no problem. <coughs> Tracy Lawrence. More Lawrence is a fun <laughs> thing. <laughs> <laughs> You're out of order, sir. <laughs> What's new? <laughs> yeah, what's new? <laughs> All right. So uh, the next one is Ray, and I guess Ray, every come forward. If most everybody on the board knows Ray, no stranger to town. Ray. Hi. So I'm Ray Bourgeois. Um, you know, I've been in town for almost three years now. Uh, I've been involved with the community, Merton's House, Thompson Senior Center. Union Arena. I've been to multiple select board meetings, EDC meetings. I have an idea how the town runs and I ran for this position in March. You're still interested? Yes. Ray, you must have some idea what you got to offer to this board. Yeah, I have um, worked in civilities management at uh, Boston University for the last 22 years before I retired and uh, worked a lot of um, grounds work, interior work, exterior work, masonry work, paving, roads, sidewalks. Thank you. Thanks. Budget planning? Yes, mm -hmm. yeah. We, had, we, had, we were responsible for our budgets. Um, I also sat in a couple budget meetings here um, this year. Any right. questions for Ray? No questions for Ray? I let him off that easy? Yep. Okay. Well, thanks for your interest. Well, when, when and Ray ran in March, he let us have all that information. Yeah. He already had a lot of right. background. Right. Okay. Thank okay. you, Ray. Thank you, Ray. Uh, we'll be uh, making decision on these appointments uh, sometime later tonight. Uh, the next one we have is Cemetery Commissioner. And I have a letter here from Fred Barr. That's a no-brainer. I make a motion we appoint Fred Barr. Yeah. It's as hard as we are to get, a, get somebody, he come right forward. So what happened? He always was. Did he just miss the... Uh, he probably forgot to okay. get a signature page. Get right. his petition okay. in. I so think we, we should have do a motion? The, I think we should do them all together. All so together. Do we, if we oh. have a motion, though, okay, I agree with that. And the next one is uh, for 
Um, filling the position of auditor, Tom Debevoise. No, that's an all brainer. We we'll make a motion. We we'll talk about we'll that. Have, we talk about okay. the other side. So we're going to make a motion all at once. Yeah. Okay. All right. That works for me. All right. So. Oh, and um, we had we had another. Um, letter of interest in the select board position, but that um, interest was withdrawn yesterday. So right. there are just the two right. candidates at this point. Okay, the next thing on the agenda is the um, street sweeper. So did everybody get a copy of the um, um, Schedule for the street street sweeper schedule. Are there copies for the audience? Did, there there copies up there? I would like so to be, yeah. can I have you make like fifteen of these? Sure. Thank you. Yeah. So <coughs> I'll share with Mary while somebody on this side takes a look at this one. She's making until the new copies come up. If you share with John, I can share with Mary. Okay. okay, I'll share with John. Yeah, we got mine. Yeah. We'll wait till yeah. she comes back so everybody's. Uh... All set? Everybody got the street sweeper? Okay. We have the schedule. <coughs> Whenever we're open for comments. Excuse like me? To, Whenever we're open for comments. You are like on the board. Mm -hmm. Please state your name, please. Okay. Charlotte Hollingsworth. I have the Ardmore in. First of all, I don't believe your street sweeper works. Um, we had very little gravel out in the front of the inn. And basically, after the street sweeping, there is more gravel there than there was before the street sweeping. It just got spread around. It's like it's carrying it with it and then just dumps it along. But the same gravel is there with additional gravel added. The second is at four in the morning, we live in the back of the inn. We can hear it like it's right in our room. Um, so the, our guests, we have three out of our four guest rooms are in the front of the inn. It's like stereophonic there. Guests are not happy. Now, um, I don't understand. We have a noise ordinance for people in the village. Why don't we have a noise ordinance for the street sweeper? I mean, at a decent time, like say from 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. And because that's before the shops open and um, there isn't hardly anyone on the street. Uh, from 8 a.m. to 4 a.m. as far as parking wise but if you what if you were worried about that 
you could have a parking on one one day they do one side of the street and there's a posted from 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. you can't park on one side of the street and the next day it just reverses um, I just think 4 a.m. is outrageous now Montpelier has a noise ordinance for the street sweeper they can't start until 6 or 7 a.m. I can't remember what the time is. We are one of the very few villages in the state of Vermont that has 4 a.m. street sweeping. So I don't get it at all. <coughs> and, but the main thing is fix the street sweeper. If you're going to have that thing that makes so much noise, it doesn't work. Um, that's that's what I have to say. Thank you. Yeah. I'm just curious, Charlotte. Was the the gravel issue? Was yeah. that one specific issue? Was that every time they go by every year? Well, I ju I just noticed it um, this this particular time because um, I had just noticed there was hardly anything in the street. So I thought, okay, what are they street sweeping for? And when I came out the next morning after the street sweeping, it was dirtier than, uh, and there was more gravel than there had been before the street sweeping. But it might have been an isolated incident and not continual problem. We'll look into that, Carl. Okay. Because I know that the hopper gets full and the hop the truck gets empty. So what the mechanics are of that particular trip in front of your property, I don't want to speak to. But I know he empties a full load out of the hopper. So he's picking something up. Yeah. Question back here. Uh, Speech, teach your name. Isabel Shiquan, the Woodstocker okay. Bed and Breakfast. Okay. Thank Everything you. that Charlotte said, we've had to extend some uh, refunds to our guests to keep them less unhappy. We um, don't know, we haven't noticed what she said about gravel, but, and for us, it's literally in the middle of the night. The street sweeper just stays there. It's extremely loud. It actually is much louder than the huge trucks going by. And we've asked the driver, and he said it's because there's a pile of gravel and waiting for it to get in. So we don't know how these machines work, but we have to say we have the same experience. And it's a big problem when you're a tourist town because, again, already we have to explain the trucks and tell the guests it's fine. There are less during the night. You'll sleep like a baby. But when the street sweeper comes, and it's a whole other story. So. And I know that there's different schedules. Um, we've been fortunate enough to be on the uh, latter part of the schedule, but just putting the pressure on other places where guests are doesn't really solve the problem. So if we could maybe move it later during the day, sometime if we have the funds have a more effective one, that'd be great. But definitely it is a huge problem for us. <coughs> Um, I've got a couple of comments. One is, that is the noisiest street sweeper I have ever heard in my entire life. I, I lived in New York City for 20 years, and I never heard a street sweeper that was anywhere close to that. Secondly, if for some reason we have to have the noisiest street sweeper in the entire world, <laughs> 4 o'clock is absurd. It's just absurd. You cannot run something that loud at 4 o'clock in the morning. It's just we live here, this is our town, I understand that they need to do it when, when they have access to the streets, but something has to be worked out. And I'd say the first thing is to figure out why that thing is so noisy. When you were here at another meeting, you were going to look into a street sweeper that you knew of that was less noisy. You said you, you I remember you brought that up. I, I mean, I don't remember, I, I really am not okay. an expert on mechanical brooms, but right. All I can tell you is that the mechanical brooms in New York City do not have that uplift blower on them. All they do is run a disc and pick of stuff up. Yeah, the that's it's the vacuum. It sounds like a jet engine outside the window. So I would suggest we we either find a different kind of street sweeper or 
we come up with a schedule that doesn't wake people up at 4 o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Uh, Brian Earn. Um, I, I, I think, you know, none of us have an objection to clean streets. We just have an objection to when it's done and, and the, the, the noise. I mean, we, we, we live up in Highland, as you know. We hear it for two hours. Yeah, and you know, the worst part of it is that it goes off and on. So it'll wind down and then wind up, just like a jet, much like a, much like a jet engine. And I think, you know, when I've raised this before with Phil or someone, it'll say, oh, we, you know, it's not illegal, we have an exemption. But in fact, uh, you know, it, the exemption, I, I'll read the exemption. It says, the repair and maintenance of municipal facilities, services, or public utilities when such work must be accomplished outside of daytime hours. I, I don't see that this has to be done outside of daytime hours. And, and because I think it, what it does is it violates the intent of the noise ordinance, which says, I'll read that too, in consideration of neighbors and in order to balance the vitality of our village and to preserve the peace and promote civility and to, to prevent hearing loss, sleep loss, and a general reduction in the quality of life, the village of Woodstock will protect the public tranquility. They aren't doing that. Anything else? I've got one over here. Please. Yes, I'm Lewis, and I'm from the village in of Woodstock. I just wanted to voice my concern as well, as far as uh, what Charlotte was talking about, and also uh, Isabel. Uh, we've also had to compensate our guests uh, for waking up at 4 o'clock and not be able to go back to bed or sleep. And um, it's, it's just a great concern to us for our guests, for future guests. <coughs> Thank you. You're welcome. <coughs> Somebody else? Back here. Okay. Go ahead. I, my husband and I also have a B&B &B in town. And, uh, and it, the, the noise isn't annoying, it's thunderous. I would invite, what? thunderous. I would invite any of you to come and stay at our place one night when it goes by, you'll know, you'll understand why we're so, uh, so worried about this continuing on. And it seems to me there is not a good reason why it can't be done between eight and 10 or later in the evening, five to seven or whatever, whenever, I mean, we have traffic patterns, I'm sure, and there are some that are less, that it, when time is less busy than others, and um, I also think when streets are being uh, worked on, there's a one-way direct, there's somebody directing traffic one way at a time. It goes very slowly. But I think that would be all manageable. And uh, truly, if none of you have actually heard it in the middle of the night, then please do come. You're welcome to come and stay with us. You can come and park and, you know, then we'll have a party because you'll understand it's Where really you? unacceptable. <laughs> I was gonna say, can I get your name, please? Oh, sorry, sorry, Willa Noel. N O H. Sally. So, I'm a village resident. I'm a fairly tolerant person. I'm also a morning person, but four o'clock in the morning, it wakes me up whenever it goes out, and it does go very slowly. So you're talking about hearing the noise for an hour or an hour and a half. So there's no, there's no break when you get it. I actually sometimes get up at five in the morning to work. I, I literally put earplugs in to be able to work at my desk when the street sweeper is out. It's, it's really not acceptable. Yes. Melina Egan. I live between Sally and Ernst. <laughs> um, and I, I can appreciate you know the traffic patterns and I'm up early as well and I walk my dogs early in the morning and then I take my kids to school in the morning and I, I can see where the traffic starts to build up, um, especially during that 7.30 to 8 o'clock hour. Um, but my question is, is, is it possible to consider an alternate side parking? Has that ever been considered? Can we consider that? Is that something that we can put on the table so that we can switch this to 4 in the morning to a few hours up? To, to help everybody's sanity and also <coughs> our <laughs> ins 
um, and our tourists? Is this something that we can consider? We can consider everything. Okay. Sorry, Joe, I didn't. We can consider everything. We can consider so everything. So, in addition to these comments, I have, um, or we've, we've been sent five letters from six people expressing their concern about the noise. These are letters that, that you're talking about, the ones we received yes. just today. Yeah. So, the these are all from residents. To us, but they were all the ones that came to yeah. you when you sent them on. And I'm just curious because this conversation happens every year. And I thought last year we decided to actually, you actually decided to start later. Um, it was very late in the fall. That was in the fall, but that didn't roll over into the I spring. I think we agreed to delay the, any decisions until now, so mm -hmm. we're having okay. this conversation. Okay. Unfortunately, the spring cleaning has already happened, and that's what's woken us all up because that's a very intense daily activity. And what, so what we can talk about now is changing the schedule for the regular cleaning. Okay, we got Ken. Yeah, okay. can't see him. Come on up, Ken. If I can clarify, spring cleaning has been accomplished in the meter and business district only. The rest of the village still needs spring cleaning. <laughs> okay, so we can make decisions that affect spring cleaning and regular cleaning. <laughs> okay, uh, we thank you for your comments, and uh, we know it's an issue, and the board will address it, because I can tell you that I live in those neighborhoods where I hear it, <laughs> and I'm a morning person, but uh, it's, it is annoying, so... We, we will find, try to find some solution that's uh, acceptable to get the job done, you know, and uh, yes. Are you considering changing the method? We will, we will work on a new plan. We will, we will try to come up with something that's acceptable to the comments that we've heard here tonight. And they're not having new comments. A new, having a new street sweeper. Excuse me? Having a new street sweeper. Are you a new you, street you sweeper? Asked the gentleman Do you have a checkbook with you? No, no. Oh, I so just, you, 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 ask, you asked the gentleman if he had done some street, research. A new research. street sweeper is very expensive. We have looked into it, okay. and it has become uh, an issue. And it's very expensive. For So where do we come up with how much? About $270,000. We were fortunate we received a grant that would have paid 80%. Unfortunately, there is not a street sweeper made in the United States that passes the made in America requirements. And so we will not be seeing anything under that grant until after 2021 at the earliest under that grant. Now, $270,000, I don't, uh, well, people may have, some people may have an appetite for that kind of a tax hike. Many would not. So how much is the grant for? Uh, 80%. 80%. So we would end up paying 20% or say 50 to 60,000. So in 2021, it's conceivable to get an 80% grant. We will shake, start shaking the tree. It depends if the president changes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because it's him, it's uh, the current president who's making the rules about the percentage that has to be made in America. Is that a political statement? No, it's not. It's a, <laughs> <laughs> it's a, a statement fact. of information. It's a fact. Yeah. <laughs> Informational fact. So when will we have the discussion? Um, go ahead. I just want to say that I hear about the, the sweeper from both both sides as the director of the Chamber of Commerce. Um, I, I do want to encourage you to have a, a weekly, the weekly sweeping. Um, I think the time certainly should be negotiable. Um, four o'clock is early for everything. Uh, and, um, but I know the business owners really take pride and they have their leaf blowers out and they're wetbacks and everything they're doing to try to keep their businesses um, clean and then 
a wind comes up and if the street hasn't been swept, it all is for naught. So uh, it's important to have, to have it swept. And the request is for a weekly sweep. Yeah. Yes. John? Yes. Yeah. Hi. Probably the only one that's going to speak for the street sweeper. The reason the schedule is so early in the morning is, is because of traffic. Uh, if any of you have been down town at uh, five o'clock or so, <clears throat> all the trucks start coming through. <coughs> a lot of delivery trucks stop at the village to deliver goods, and uh, the car traffic starts picking up. Now, the reason they start at four o'clock is because that's the lowest volume of traffic that there is during the night. Uh, unless they do it at, at midnight or one o'clock, which is worse yet. Uh, I know that that sleeper makes a lot of, quite a lot of noise. We've had that sleeper how long, Phil? About 10 years, John. We've had it about 10 years. Until this year, nobody's bitched about it, to put it plainly. And uh, <clears throat> all of a sudden, there's a big movement about this Sweet sweeper, and uh, for efficiency's sake of the village highway crew, it's really the only time they can really start is is at four o'clock, and like I say, get ahead of the traffic. And the reason the noise is, of course, is the suction on it picking up the dirt. Uh, another type of sweet sweeper is it'll sweep it up in a pile, and then you've got to go pick it up, which is not very conducive to labor and not very easy to do. So I, I'm really kind of in defense of the street sleeper and like Book said, we'll try to do, find something some way uh, better, but uh, until we can, I don't know, we can investigate the uh, the models of street sweepers, but I doubt if we find one that's any quieter than this one is already. So, so when are we going to have this discussion and make a decision? Um, like, why would like should, to do? should we? Um, this is not a popular suggestion, I know, but should we not sweep for a couple of weeks? No. And. No, that's not and right not talk about it no. and no no we, we could why don't I think I would like to see uh, Jill I'd like to see uh, Phil and the highway superintendent try to come up from the comments we heard here tonight to try to come up with a solution for the board to address the sweet sweeper I think that's We're a lovely gonna, suggestion but we made that suggestion at a prior meeting and we have no suggestion and I don't think we're going to um, satisfy everybody but um, I think it's worth a try to try to come up so with so I'd like to suggest an interim measure which is that the sweets for the next few weeks until this is done the street sweeper does not start until six o'clock in the morning and we see how that works and hopefully that will give incentive to come up with an alternative because if we don't do anything, another four weeks is going to go by, another four weeks of upset guests and residents. And I don't think that's acceptable. We've been talking about this for a long time. Um, you understand it's a sweet sweeper schedule here is, is listed. <coughs> You've all read it, I guess, or most of you read it. But that's what we propose to do. And that will have to be enforced until we can find another solution. No, it does, it does not have to be enforced. We can change it. We have the authority to change it now. So um, the, the problem is that the job is not going to be done well. I agree with you. I don't like the noise, but the job needs to be done. And no job is worth doing if you don't do it well. Ma'am? Uh, uh, yeah, nobody has uh, mentioned the evening. We're, we notice after 8 o'clock in the middle of the week, the streets are empty downtown. Mm -hmm. Um, we don't understand why it can't be done there. Yeah. And also, I'd like to point out, when you mentioned that it's 10 years old, we've lived here for 11 years. It has never sounded like it does now and last year. There's something wrong. It's deteriorated. We never noticed it before then. So I would like you also to take a decibel reading. I mean, it's, it's ridiculous. 
The other thing, the idea that efficiency should come before our health is questionable to me. Uh, when, when, when it's suggested that efficiency is more important than our health, that's not appropriate. But I, I, I wonder why we can't do some kind of traffic assessment in the evening. We're shocked at how empty the streets are at, at 8.30 at night. I'm sure, I understand, but I'm sure that if we went to the evening, we'd have just as many people come in and comment about the evening as we do in the morning. You know, there are I, cocktail sure parties and dinner. I, I, would, I would doubt that quite a bit. <laughs> why, why not try it and wait again sure. for weeks? <laughs> if you've already had this conversation four weeks ago, why not try a different alternative and wait another four years? For weeks? Well, is there something to lose? Does it have anything to do with um, the daylight hours of early morning now or what about um, Alex, the man who operates the street sweeper? Um, last year we tried, was it 5 a.m. instead of 4 a.m.? Did we do that last year, Ken, for a while in the fall? Yes, we did. And um, how was that for traffic? Well, Alex is the one who would know that best. It's, what you end up doing is, going around a lot of vehicles and not getting a lot of the streets left. Now, I'm not opposed to trying anything as directed. What I would question, if you want me to come up with Phil, is maybe Beth could answer this. To be efficient from 8 to 10, it's a very slow machine. You're putting a very slow machine out on Route 4 for a very long time dangerous to the public at those hours a.m. Um, how are the merchants going to feel if I block off half their parking? I Before would want that feedback. You would have to block yeah. off one side. Yes, Jill, before 10. So there's no customers before 10, except at the post. That's the cafe. They're loaded. From I'm, just I'm, just, I'm asking because these are issues that I know parking's an issue. So to do this during daylight hours, or later morning hours, I'm going to have to block off parking, and I just question how the merchants would feel about that. Well, I a, I'm just asking. I'd just like to say that. There are residents and there are merchants in this town, and both need to be considered, and merchants okay. don't carry the day. Okay. Okay, just, uh, I got this young lady <laughs> over here yeah. first. So I'm both of those. <laughs> I own a business and I'm a resident. Um, so I appreciate the conversation that's happening right now. Um, and I'm also up early in the morning, 5, 5.30 a.m., walking the dog, so I see the deliveries that are happening in town, especially to the cafes. Um, and I think, though, that it was mentioned that the central district <coughs> has been taken care of for the spring. That no, was the mentioned. Worst, the worst, thickest gravel is gone. It still needs a weekly tune-up. Okay, so the weekly tune-up. Okay, so maybe we can compromise, though. So 5, 5 a.m. definitely didn't work last year, you're saying? Or it was maybe going around a couple trucks because 530 is pretty empty in town so I mean I, th I think and maybe other people can talk to that but if we can at least compromise for a little bit and try to help and address the merchants and the residents of Woodstock Village and surrounding areas I don't know how far the street sweeper goes but that would be great and then come up with a solution that helps both merchants and residents <coughs> without making decisions right now. But to at least show that we're trying to think about this and make a change mm -hmm. now to see how it goes would be really appreciated. Okay. I had one back here first. Well, I, I was going to ask about 8 o'clock at night. Are, is, this, is the idea that there are too many cars on the road for the restaurants? <coughs> for like between 8 and 10 at night? Well, I can't speak to that. My, I, I agree that that's probably a low traffic time. The issues I would see with that would be 
that my men are typically scheduled 7 to 3.30. They do come in early to sweep, but it's a continuous part of their day. I'm now going to ask them to come in at 7, leave at 3.30, come back at 8. Now mind you, when you say 8 to 10, you're telling that sweeper 8 to 11.30. Because from 10 to 11.30, he's got to go dump, clean the truck out, take it back up to the shop, then go home, get home at midnight, and be back in at 7. Very difficult for schedule. The other problem with evening sweeping and scheduling is if something arises, sweeping doesn't get done. There's a lot of variables in scheduling that sweeper, and I do, I, I, I'm willing to try anything that'll work, but evening sweeping is very difficult. The short answer for me, for a suggestion there would be, try to find an operator that we could hire just to do that in the evenings. That's difficult to find somebody with a CDL that wants to work seven to midnight, one night a week. There, there, there's a host of issues <laughs> to work around and we can look at all of it, but I don't have definitive answers. But, but I think the question is that this subject was raised last fall. That's plenty of time to consider alternatives. Now it's May and we haven't. So are we going to discuss this for six months and put up with the four o'clock starts or not? Yes. I mean, the is, over is, is a 6 a.m. to 8 a.m. Is that a possibility? It seems like, it seems like a compromise. The, the jobs will get done. The traffic really starts coming in, you know, between 7.30 and, and 8 for the cafes. And, and we know that, um, but most employees aren't there at until eight in the morning. It just seems like six a.m. might be reasonable to try. Just a minute, Joe. Besi yeah. Um, Thanks, I Beth. Thank you, Thanks, rather Beth. Rather than, I mean, if this goes back to where you wanted it four a.m., I would rather sweep the front of my inn is the 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 base or the front of the property is not that big. I would sweep the street by hand myself <laughs> rather than, I, it's not that much. It, and it's dirtier now than it was before the street sweeper came. So I would be happy to sweep the area and I'm sure the other businesses, especially the innkeepers, would do the same in order to have, they're, lo they're losing money. I mean, you, when you have to get, when you have unhappy guests, because who wants, who, people go to stay at a bed and breakfast, and then those people are also going to go to shops and go to restaurants, but they won't come here if they go, well, you're up at 4 a.m for the street sweeper that sounds like a wind tunnel. Mm -hmm. And I would rather not have the street sweeper and just do it myself. Uh, okay. If so that's what you have to do, if you won't fix the other one. Not just you, Charles. Not just your problem. Okay. We are... Uh, may I just make... Yes, you down? may. <laughs> <laughs> because I absolutely agree with what Charlotte's saying. I would much rather street sweep my part of the street then shovel the snow in the winter. So if if w that could flip, <laughs> then everybody's happy. <laughs> so let's uh, let's let's see if we can wind this down. Um, how many who have objected to the time? Would if we can work it out? Would six o'clock make everybody happy today? Would that be a good compromise? If we said we'll start from six, it may be difficult for us and the job may not be as well done because of some of the trucks, but is six o'clock, is that okay? It will not, it will not be six o'clock in front of your head. It will be six o'clock. Well, at six o'clock, they're going to have to have a police force. We might have to have. have it's uh, not going to be good. We might have to have. They're going to have to escort uh, it all the time. It is. So you're going to have to have three men at the least. So, so how many people think we could go at six, start at six? How many would, that As, objected, is six workable? Is this a temporary measure? 
I, I don't see any show of hands here. It looks like nobody. It's better wants. than it's better than four. Yes. Okay. So better. we all about eight to ten. And no, that I, the I can tell you that that is going to be very difficult because schools, school buses, a lot of heavy traffic. It's it's really police. difficult. We're going to have to have the police escort. How about six? Nobody likes six. How about if we don't sweep sweep them at all? All right, that's fine. <laughs> um, I have one okay. question about Wait, hold it. people sweeping their own in front of their own places. Jesus. Where would the debris go? In a storm drain? Where would you dispose of it yourselves um, for in your own trash receptacle? Because to sweep that into one of our storm drains or uh, you know what I'm leading right. to. It's going to be counterproductive. They're going to plug up. Then you're going to have water coming everywhere. So. And you're going to get hit by a car. And it's dangerous. <laughs> it's very dangerous out there. We've already had and too many people killed on our streets by cars. Ma'am, you have the floor. Yes, I just have a question to answer the, the scheduling issue of your team. Could you not schedule the person? If, if we go back to the idea of the night sweeping or the evening sweeping, could that person who's doing the job until midnight come in later the next day or not have the next day? I mean, we do that all the time with our employees. We don't schedule them back to back. We're okay. mindful of their schedule. So maybe some of them would appreciate you know, having a different, different timing once in a while. I have two people in the village. They both alternate running the sweeper. In the spring, it runs frequently. When it goes to once a week, or even today as we speak, that it didn't run. They have many other jobs to do. So to say, today I want you to come in four to midnight versus seven to three, but tomorrow will be here at seven. Well, no, that's the whole point. If they're four to midnight, they skip tomorrow, or, I mean, it's just, just before their day off. It's, yeah. it's, it would be very difficult. Can I ask a, can I ask a question? Are, are, they, are they paid extra to do that? So we're not going to find a decision now, but I do think we can find a compromise now while the discussion goes forward. I asked for a show of hands for the six o'clock, and I got no view. So no, I got a few. Great. As a temp, how about as a temporary measure, a six o'clock start while we find some alternatives? Yeah. Okay. On a Wednesday. On a Wednesday. Not Friday. Friday. Well, well, that's what this says is Wednesday. It's Friday. So it's not Friday and Saturday and no, Sunday it's mornings. It's Sunday morning would be good. <laughs> Should I get up early to go to church? <laughs> <laughs> Does seem like all right. So we have, we got to, we got to, <laughs> so we are agreeable that we will try six in the morning, mm -hmm. and we, we will do it on a Wednesday. No, we both. We both. You, you people you realize how much police escort this is going to take at we six o'clock. They're going to have to have at least two officers there, and probably three. Because it's a moving uh, vehicle, Lord, they're going to, you're going to have an awful police bill to go along with the street sweeping. And it's a safety issue. Terrible. A real safety issue as well. Not for the guy in the street sweeper, but the automobiles that are trying to duck in around and pass it and head it for work. And uh, Joe, People you got the floor. Thank you. Um, Personally, You're going to have backups and traffic, Joe. Personally, I think it's critical that uh, that the um, local B and B businesses be protected and and supported as much as possible. I mean, they're under a lot of pressure now with with the Airbnb issue and and other factors that are kind of coming in on them and them trying to compete with with all of the other stuff that's going on. Um, I don't, I can't speak for every merchant downtown, but as a merchant downtown, um, I can see us having a problem with sweeping one side of the road one day and the other side of the road the following week. I mean, it, it, I think it makes <coughs> sense 
and and it would accomplish a whole lot. And starting a little, little late, a little bit later would be you know in in conjunction with start doing one side of the street one week. And I mean we do it we do it around the green in the winter time. They park on one side one day, the following day they park on the other side. I mean it, I think it can be worked out and it should be worked out. Okay. So I would like to suggest that with the caveat that this is a temporary solution while you're looking for more systematic options that that I would agree that we adopt six starting at six o'clock. Um, I would also suggest that much as we all love Woodstock, it's not the only town in the entire world, and other people have solved this problem, I'm sure. So are we looking at what Montpelier is doing, or White River Junction is doing, or other places? Because we can't be the only people who have ever come up with this issue. They started at six. <laughs> okay. So I would throw that back to you, Paul. So we have a highway department that does actual work, and if we ask them to do research, they, won't do the, they can't do the work. So I would ask all of you to do some research and find out what's going on in other towns, in Vaughan or elsewhere, wow. to find some other solutions. I was just say, it's interesting because when we talked to Montpelier, and they, they said, I think Sharon said, we, we can't do it before six because we have a noise ordinance. Well, I will call the city manager of Montpelier, good friend of mine. Okay, you satisfied? I was going to say that, um, oh, me or? Yeah, you. I, I was going to say I agree with Jeff. <laughs> I agree with Jeff. Oh, really? I do. one for one, Maybe you're the first So everybody say street sweeper ten times as fast as you can. <laughs> okay. My concern is 7.30 to 8 a.m. for the next few weeks while school is still in session. And the fact that there's a child care center in the Episcopal Church and right by the rec center, and there are small children getting crossed the street at that hour. And that really troubles me, 7.30 to 8 o'clock. Mm -hmm. We come to work here at 8 o'clock in the morning, and there are a lot of little people out there with parents but a lot of little people, and that concerns me. Well, maybe that can be addressed in the schedule so that you, you do, maybe, I mean, maybe we go out twice at 7 o'clock or 6.30 so that we can avoid those, the, the things that we have to avoid. It's an experiment. If That's I what we need to do. If I start at 6, without, if I start, I'll use Rec Center Bridge. If he starts sweeping there at 6 o'clock, headed west, or excuse me, east, he's probably <coughs> an hour to an hour and a half to reach the green. It's a very slow-moving machine in the spring, even though spring cleanup, it's a very slow-moving machine. I think and a man in the room might be faster. <laughs> if you can find them. <laughs> No, I, I'm asking it. I agree with what Mary's saying, but I can't start at 6 and be done by 7.30 and have anything done other than backed up traffic at that time of day, which is the concern I believe you're speaking yeah. of. I, I'm willing to try it, um, but... So I'd like to pose a motion that says for the next... You, for the next four weeks, we experiment and we do not start street super till 6 a.m. And any experiment is okay, but no before 6 a.m. What days are these going to be on? Pardon? What days are, is this happening? No, so it's uh, during the week. And then Ken comes to us in a month with some ideas. And Phil, Ken and Phil. Can we add on to that, though, that if we looked into that machine get fixed? It's it's so bad. Can it, can anybody fix it? We, it's been out for repair now. For we will look into your complaint about a drop and grab. I got it fixed. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's a very old machine. There's no question about it. But it's very expensive. Um, well, maybe one of the alternatives is what we have a motion on the floor. I'll second that motion so that we can move the discussion along and take a vote. So would that be once a week or is it still? Okay. 
I leave that up to the town manager and the highway department we have found to see once what's a week, going to work. We have found once a week sweeping of a business district to keep the business community happy. It also enables the sweeper to move a little bit quicker because there's less on the street. Most of that gravel comes in off people's tires off the back roads. <laughs> I would ask that, that the business owners who would want it have be given a schedule then because we for one will have to alert our guests or else just not take guests. Or six a.m. Yeah. 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 It's too early. Right. When you're on yes, vacation, they they're not up at six. Very rarely they're up. They, so if we knew in advance, at least we could mitigate. We could you know either let them know or or move them to another room or close up part of the B&B in advance, just not rent the room. Sometimes you'd rather not have rented the rooms than have unhappy people that can do more damage. What's your, uh, what's your slowest night? Is there one that's... Probably one Tuesday, Wednesday or night or, or slow. Of course, I'm sure it depends on the season. But yes. So if it was a Wednesday or Thursday morning, that might be the least issue? Probably Tuesday morning, Wednesday morning. Okay. And it really depends, but typically midweek is slower. Midweek is slower than week the weekend, but after 21 years, I will tell you, you can't guess. Right. <laughs> it's uh -huh. She has a floor. Sorry. So Mary brought up the schools and children, and she knows I'm on the school board, so I feel like I have to speak up and say that I'm not speaking for the school board because I can't speak for everybody. But we do have a crossing guard at the school, so that's helpful. And does the street sweeper go by 106 Woodstock Elementary School at hours where the children or drop off and pick up will be happening? If I moved to 6 o'clock, it would have to. It would go through that street at, um, what, at what time? If I start at 6, it would probably be down around the school and coming back sometime between 7.30 and 8. Would be that would cause an issue. So why couldn't we stop at school? <laughs> <laughs> it's right out. I mean, that would cause an issue. I'm not giving you the solutions. Right. I'm saying that we need to think around what the issues are and come up with an alternative. Because four o'clock is most, not acceptable to many people. And I'm going to say that causes an issue because right now there is, if you have children at the school, you know how much of an issue drop off and pick up is right now. So that's why I'm bringing it up. Mary brought it up. I'm going to speak for the school now because that is a hazardous time and it's problematic so and it's hard for trucks, even just pickups, to go through that sort of narrowed way and I would not want to put Miss Town in danger. <laughs> She's the one who crosses our kids. So if that would be an issue. It's going to be an issue if I sleep any time really after seven. The thing travels two to three miles an hour. It takes nanoseconds to have a backed up traffic. When you're backing up traffic people <coughs> aren't overly patient. They, they try to dart around it. You have truck traffic. It, it's not really a safe environment so, to be on the road at that time. And there's no point making uh, this. I don't think there's any point having any further discussion about okay. safety or efficiency okay. because we're going to have to say we need to make a decision that works for residents and businesses in the town does, and is also safe. Does anybody have anything Different to say? Yes. I yes. Think, okay. I think, I of course, you do. Question. Yet I understand that the town owns that piece of equipment and has for over ten years. Is and I know you've already finished your budget process, etc. But would it be worth looking at renting a different piece of equipment that was that that did things differently? Um, maybe less noisy, maybe not the vacuum, maybe, you know, I, I, I've seen a whole variety of different sweepers. We have done that and oh, we okay. also had a contract with Gurney at one time to sweep. sweep. It's very expensive, but it, I don't know that it was any quieter, okay. but, uh, it, you know, so, Joe? Well, you want something different? I need something different. You can go crazy with this idea. Why don't you just cut him a deal? 
In other words, what I'm saying is, you, the merchants downtown are required to shovel their own space in front of their, in front of their stores. But they're not required to clean the streets in front of their stores. Mm -hmm. Why don't you say, okay, you're required to clean the streets. We'll do the snow removal instead and swap it. The money you would spend on sweeping, spent on snow removal instead. And I'll bet you. We'll take that into consideration. <laughs> well, it, like something you can think about. All right, the motion has been made to. What's the motion? The motion is to go from. To start street sweeping after 6 o'clock and consider it an experiment, experiment time, to come back with proposals in four weeks for alternative ideas. Four weeks. Okay. After 6 or at 6? No earlier than 6 a.m., but okay. any time during the day. And for four tonight. weeks from today. Yeah. All right. Motion's been made and seconded by Mary. All those in favor of the motion say aye. Aye. I'm staying. <laughs> I sustain. That's two, four, and two abstain. I think we can work out a solution. When? <clears throat> well, just as a resident, it'd be nice to know what the schedule is. Ideally, it will be a Wednesday, weather-driven and other problem-driven. I know, and we, I wasn't aware that this everyday thing was, you know, if it's five days or ten days. It was pretty, it was pretty bad. Getting woken up at four o'clock every night. Okay. You mm -hmm. missed it. <laughs> Duly noted, thank you. Yes. I, I understand the safety issues, and I, um, and, but I really think that this alternate side parking makes sense. Why can't we do it, if we did it at six, and did it, did it two days? Like, you know, do one side one, and, and end before children are going to school. I have a question about that. Would that require <coughs> change for your parking? Which would take I have to look at the ordinance. Which would take like a 45 day minimum. Yeah. So I have a question. Well, what was the police chief is authorized to make emergency rules right. and regs regarding parking? So since two of us voted for and two abstain, what does that mean our next move is? <coughs> we stay as we are? I, I like some other suggestions that I heard here tonight that are not in your motion. I like the idea of maybe closing one side of the street and doing one side of the street one day and another side the other day. That's all uh, in my motion. No, that's in your motion. Right, you're, 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 all I said in my motion was no street, street sweeper before 6 a.m., but anything can be considered after. Now, to do that, one side of the street parking, sweep the other side, would it be the ne very next day? Because that's putting the sweeper out there two consecutive days. It was weather driven and other issues driven. Or, you know, would it be the next yes. week? And no, it could well, be the next week because we can have a rainstorm exactly. in a moment. And they ain't going to sleep when it's raining anyway. That's right. So or there are wet. so many issues. Can I just suggest that? I'm, I'm pretty appalled to hear that it's so hard for the innkeepers in town. Um, and I'm not appalled because I probably would be the same person like downstairs, like what's going on around here? We are, have all of these efforts in this town to in make it more attractive to visitors. And I would suggest that this is an emergent situation and should not be treated as something that can be put off again and again and again. So I appreciate that you're, that you're going forward with all due diligence and looking at all of the aspects, but I would suggest that you decide on a date certain that there will be serious recommendations made and I would suggest that you stand back from whether or not this particular person can come to work that day or that day and, and come up with a, a strategic plan for this. If that means renting equipment, if that means starting to budget for additional equipment, but I, I would suggest that you cannot afford to lose the business of innkeepers. Jill has said four weeks. Four weeks from tonight is June 18th. 
June 18th. Yes, I said to experiment, but that wasn't part of One more question. No, can I just say, it sounds like, you know, we've talked about 8 to 10 at, at night. And it sounds like the, the real impediment to that is a labor issue. It's, it's it, you know, it, it's probably the most soluble of all of the issues. The, the, people are already paid overtime, as you said, to, to, to do the, to run this, to run the sweeper. And I wonder if, you know, if there might be a bit of an incentive that would get the people to, to be willing to do that one time a week for, for those hours. And, and it might be the least expensive and the least disruptive of all of the options you might want to you might want to consider. It, you, Brian, there's no disrespect intended with what I'm about to say, but you're saying one day a week, but it affects an individual's work schedule and themselves for at least two, possibly three days to do that evening schedule someone from 7 to midnight at night. Yeah. <laughs> Either they've worked that day, have to come early the next. There's a lot of negotiation there yeah, yes, with an a, individual. I think what I'm saying is that's a labor issue which, which might be addressed, which might be soluble, whereas all of our other solutions require, you know, are talking about twice a week, side to side parking, and, and I, you know, if, if, if I look at it and say, you know, what, what would be the simplest solution <coughs> would be if we could solve that labor question, we could move it, we could move, we could move the sweeping to, you know, to, to one evening, one evening a week. So, anybody else? Do you have anything you'd like to add to your motion or change your motion? Can we vote on it? Well, it depends on what it is. Oh, okay, so I made a motion, it was defeated. So you made a motion that it... And it was defeated. And it start no... My motion was to, for the next four weeks, to start to experiment with different ideas, to start the street sweeper no earlier than 6 a.m., but use any ideas that you have, and then in four weeks come back with a decision for the rest of the summer. And Mary, you seconded it? I did second it so we could discuss it, which we did at length. I really, I'm done. Uh, motion, motion's been made and seconded. All those, any further discussion? Same motion. Anybody, uh, all those in favor? Aye. I will, I will vote Aye. for it to move this along. I think it's important that we don't sit on this for another whole the year. So I will vote yes that we go for the four four weeks and try to come up with a different solution, different times. Um, I understand everybody's concerns, but it's a job that has to be get done and if we're gonna do a job, we have to do a good job. So we'll see where it goes. And I thank you all for your comments. Thanks for coming and please let us know how it works. Yeah, come back in four weeks. All right, we will give you plenty of warning in four weeks to time's up. And make right notes. Yes. You know, come prepared. <coughs> Are any of you willing to come? And you, and you can pick up your, and you, you. I'm not kidding. I don't need to, I can you, I'm not kidding. You can pick up your brooms on the way out. <laughs> Do you know what she's talking about? I okay. Right. I, it's a problem. Okay. Phew. Okay. I guess so. <laughs> okay. And hopefully you received my EDC report. I did. Um, we have five items that need action by the select board. So I don't know how you want to do this, um, you want me to present them, or whether you want to just vote on them yourselves. Well, we've all read it. Have we all read it? Yeah. Read it. Yes. So we can propose motions okay. straight away. Yep. Yep. One by one. <laughs> one by one. Okay. So the first one is the approval of $2,500 for the matching funds for the municipal planning grant. 
I'll propose a motion to approve the 2500 for the matching grants to the River Loop Trail. And I will second that. The motion's been made and seconded for number one for $2,500 for the matching funds for the Municipal Planning Grant. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Approval for the EDC Coordinator's Contract Extension. I'll propose a motion to approve extending the EDC Coordinator's Contract for the, for two months. And two months? For say for the additional wording to with, on with no additional funds required towards budgeted. Right. There was, there was, there were, they over budgeted for my position last year, so there are still funds left for two more months, and then I'll be on a, or the position will be on a municipal schedule, and they will determine exactly if okay. we want to make any changes. So no new money, just contract agreement. Motion's been made. Yes. And second. And seconded. Any further discussion? All those in favor, say aye. 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 The ayes have it. The next is for the approval for $5,000 for matching funds for the Teagle Landing Improvements. I will uh, propose a motion to approve the grant of $5,000 for the Teagle's Landing Improvements uh, on condition that they go past the, DR, the Design Review Board. They did. We did. Have you applied already? Right. Yeah. I'll that, second that, that motion. Um, I'm sorry? No, we're good. Motion's been made Wait and seconded. Second. No, I did not do Teagle's Landing. I did trash cans, benches, and oh. pots. Then, okay. okay. So I just think they need Plenty. to go. So that has I to come that. before design review. That application must be made. Right. I will second it with that condition. Motion's been and made and review. seconded. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 The ayes and, have it. Um, I just want to say one thing about the name of, I believe it's Teagle Landing. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. <laughs> it's Teagle Landing. We it need to Teagle give Frank okay. the okay. respect Sorry. he I, I kept it consistent because I had it one way. I one know. Way I, like, okay, I know. But if you look at the little yeah. thing with Fine. this picture, okay. Teagle Landing. Okay. Thank you. The next one is the $16,000 to create sidewalk bump outs. You that were here at the EDC meeting, I guess you know what that I entails. Do. I yes. Um, go ahead. Should I propose a motion so we can have a discussion? Yes, we okay. have to have a discussion. So I'll propose a motion to approve the allocation of sixteen thousand to create five bump outs at the sidewalk locations in the village, uh, on condition this, that this has been to the DRB. This doesn't that say that five. It's I my notes. It oh, okay. Pots. Yes. Okay. okay. Before the, the, the design review board. Yes. 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 And I'll second that motion. There, for discussion purposes. The motion's been made and seconded to approve sixteen thousand dollars to create five sidewalk bump outs. Okay. What a, what a, what is that anyway? My five locations. At five locations. At five locations. <laughs> this is also involves a sweeping issue my concern and I know that the some members of the EDC have heard this when you place those pots out on the roadway there is going to be debris accumulating around those pots that the sweeper cannot get near unless they are out of the way number one or someone physically goes out there and sweeps around them and it might have to be every week it could be a couple of weeks 10 days something like that but who is going to take care of that kind of thing is one of my questions and I will add that during this past winter when we had more snow and slush than we typically do business people directed me right out to where we have current bump outs to address the issue of the accumulation of snow and ice that the plows could not get to. And there's really nothing we can do. They shovel their sidewalks and it goes over by the meters. It We did some shoveling between meters so people could access the meters this winter and that accumulation in certain areas
just grow and grow. And there was a lot of comment and unpleasant at times over that. So we're going to have it this summer. It's going to be dust. It's going to be gum wrappers. Somebody's going to lose the cap off their coffee cup. And it's all going to go in that little corner where these planters are going to be. And that has to be addressed before I can vote in favor of this. Where are these planters going to be? Um, near Gillingham, in front of Gillingham's, correct? The crosswalk at Gillingham's. Go ahead, Joe. Sure. John. And both. Joe's going to tell you. I'll tell you what it's going to be. Well, let me, let me, uh, first of all, please don't kill the messenger. I have these, no weapon. These, these bump outs were recommended, first of all, by a company we paid $26,000 for consulting. Right. They recommended it. We had several community meetings, they were all in favor of it. I went around the town with the chief and he liked the idea. Those are the benches. Right behind it you'll find the pots. So what was recommended, now if you think I'm going to get involved with the sweeping thing, I'm a little crazy, but I'm not stupid. I'm not going to go near that thing. I'm just going to say, this is what was suggested. And I'll tell you the spots that were suggested at. There's no there's size been, on here. There's, what? there's no sizes to these things. Yes, they're 30 inches long, high. high. They're two foot around, they're three yep. foot around. Two foot around, right? Yes. Yes. So what was suggested by the report from Dubois and King and other folks who came to the community meeting that we had these bump outs that extend from um, the covered bridge to the green, from the green to the end, from Gillingham's to the um, flannel shop, and from Bentley's over to the pharmacy, and from High Street over to Monbury. Okay, so what the idea is, the concept is this. Three pots <coughs> on each side of a crosswalk on both sides of the crosswalk. Three pots, Three pots right? Two now, three. Um, there may be spots where we can't put three pots. Maybe we can only put two, and so that's what we'll do. There may be spots that may need four, and we'll put one where there's four. What the chief suggested is the emphasis should be put on the, tr the line of traffic coming to that crosswalk. In other words, if you're coming east and you're approaching a covered bridge, the emphasis of going west and you approach the covered bridge, the emphasis should be on the east side of the crosswalk. So from his viewpoint, what's the purpose of these? I'm sorry? What is the purpose of these bump outs? It's, first of all, it's kind of going to dress up the town a little bit more. Secondly, it'll provide some safety for people across the street. In other words, instead of stepping right out from behind a parked car into Still ongoing there. traffic, they'll have these kind of warnings, if you will, that there are people crossing. And the people crossing will be able to kind of have a place to look and see if there, there's traffic coming their way. It's a safety issue. That's one of the reasons why the chief liked it. What's up? Uh, there's three of these at a thing. What's one of these when it's full of dirt going to weigh? Oh, I don't know. I know, but it's, a, no it's an issue of moving them in the winter. Yeah. Where are we going to store them? Well, that's a good question. Um, we're going to get into the benches. So one of the suggestions was, since the benches can be left out year round, because they're getting made to teak. Right. The places that where the existing benches are now stored could it won't be needed anymore for the storage. Maybe, possibly, just a suggestion, they could think about it, um, put the pots where the, where the benches were going to be. And who's going to do that? Well, we'll hope, I, you know, that's a good, not a good question, Butch. I wanted to speak to Ken about it. So Ray and I talked about this, and, uh, we, th we thought, well, what the best way to do it was to talk to Phil first. Phil wasn't available. 
So then we said, well, should we wait till Phil comes back and talk to him, or should we go right to Kent? Again, we thought, maybe we should wait till Phil gets back and we talk to him about it, and then maybe he might have some ideas that we can approach Kent with. And that's so we haven't had really the opportunity to talk the, to Kent about it. The, the thing I have is that these, these things are good, and I think they're pretty. I think they look nice, yeah. but it puts another burden on the taxpayers to maintain it. You already have an issues with the plant pots that are going on the, <coughs> on the light posts, getting somebody to do that job that's, and that's, take care that's, of that. That's, that's been resolved. I know that's been resolved, but now you've got how many of these pots total then? Have you 50 got to 60. 50 to 60 of these pots that have got to be moved with a loader and then put back out in the spring. Right. That's a, that's a lot. That's tying up a piece of equipment. It's, it's what? It's tying up men. Yep. So I have a suggestion. Yes. I hear both people. And again, this is this, this, this you know, is all you have to do is say no. I mean, because well, I don't want to say no. I think it's a great <laughs> idea. Hold on, hold and on. my suggestion would be yeah. that the EDC put money enough aside to maintain these, take them out, find a place to store them. It's their baby. It's not the taxpayer's baby. So if it costs two thousand dollars a year to take them in and two thousand to put them out you pay the bill every every year so well, we'll it's move. not an every year thing my understanding is that it's an experiment yes so why if it doesn't work we just okay. chuck it what so do you do with 50 mm -hmm. pots that's a good question you're going to have to store them down to the jungle uh, yeah. down to the so jar. jill has a floor so if it's an experiment, mm -hmm. rather than get tangled up with what's going on in the highway department, yeah. why don't we pay for the putting out and the collection of them and not make it a town responsibility for the first year and keep the experiment clean? And then if we like the idea, we find a way to do it. So what you're suggesting is that the, the <coughs> responsibility of putting them out and storing them after it's ours. Yes. 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 As an experiment, because if we get tangled up with who's going to do this, how are we going to budget for it, the experiment won't happen. But Could Jill, you store them down to the new park? I, Wait a minute. Idea. I like that idea, Jill, and I'd also like you to include sweeping within these, uh, around the flower pots and within this barrier you want. Just to see what it takes. I, this is a great Idea. I think the it's beautiful. Thought of it. The yeah. concept sounds wonderful. Sure. But if you don't like it, don't vote for it. But I'm not. <laughs> I, I, like I like it. I like it. Those are just so concerns I'll that I have. I'll get this request. I, I, the only thing that I have a problem with, with is this experiment thing for a year because that's where we got into with the, with the pots on the lampposts. And now it's become a burden for somebody every year to put them up to, right i mean it's yeah you know, yes. and and without beth doing that and organizing that i just don't want to see this in another year say we need money from the budget to to do this well, well we might well, have that if well it's to good address that issue to address that issue uh, part of what this money is going towards is to maintain them throughout the summer. That means feed them and water them and, and that. And uh, what we'd like to do and what we what we'd suggested to Beth, and Beth seems it's a good idea, is that next year the combined maintenance of the hanging pots and these pots, uh, the maintenance of all of those would be put out for bid and it would be part of the EDC I budget. Like that idea. So how about we propose... Now, put, finding some... Excuse me, Jill. But finding some place to store them... If you want your proposal approved, perhaps you should listen. Well, I want to answer your question. I Thank don't you have still. a question. Well, you had a question. Somebody had a question about storage. Be nice. Yes. Sorry, I'll be nice. So, I don't know what to do about that. You know, somebody has a barn and we can put them in? I, I don't know. I have no idea what to do about that. From other Jill's So. Yes. Did she bend up? Yes. You want to do an experiment. I suggest that you do, the EDC does an experiment and does not include any of the town staff 
or to do the experiment, but you do it independently. You have a clean experiment. You keep, you do the maintenance, you do the sweeping, you do all of that, and then you come back to us at the end of the summer and tell us whether it's a success or not. And if you do that before November, then we start our budget discussions and we know whether we should be including this. So in the grant request didn't include the it included maintenance. The maintenance for the first year. Yeah. For the first year, but it did not include sweeping and, and storage. Yeah. Did not include maintenance of the flowers, not the area around the pots, correct? So, correct. So I'm sure that we could approve this now and then next month approve a few more thousand. Uh, can I make another suggestion? And that is that, that you approve the total budget and if, because I'm not sure you know exactly how many you're going to use, that maybe, maybe you only do four bump outs instead of five, <coughs> or something like that, that, it, that you, you have some flexibility in there right now to keep this moving ahead. Are these real clay pots or the plastic? They're resin. Yeah. They're resin. Red thing. Yeah, because the clay, if you don't take oh, the dirt out of it. We're not going to do that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that. Did you? I, I, do we have a motion? Is that acceptable? Uh, I don't think I don't think I'm going to Okay, yes, we do have a motion. What are you going to do with these things? Are we going to read it? Huh? I say withdraw it now. Do you want to withdraw it for now? Withdraw it? I don't want to. Let's talk about it. Why don't we draw it down? But we don't have to go forward. We don't have to move forward now. I would, I would, let's look into maintenance and so forth. Can, can, I think we want to withdraw it for now. You want to what? Withdraw it for now. The request for the grant. You want to miss the planting? No, we won't. We have, to, we have to decide what we're going to do about this. I mean, you know, you, you put this added burden on us, now we've got to address that. Yeah, I don't know you how, know. I'm not going out to sweep. <coughs> I will. I don't mind planting the pots. Uh, I don't see myself sweeping around. You know, no. we have um, markings at every crosswalk mm -hmm. in town. Mm -hmm. We have markings where people aren't supposed to park and where there's supposed to be additional visibility right. specifically for crosswalks. Right. And people park in those spots and you can't always see the people. So this is a wonderful idea. And so is communism, but it doesn't work. <laughs> so we have another Ciao. meeting on June 4. Say what? We have another meeting on June 4. Oh, a joint meeting. Then. A select board meeting? With the trustees. Oh, okay. okay. It's the joint meeting. So that gives us two weeks. And that's two weeks. Two weeks and we'll see if we can figure out something about storage, basically. Because think about it storage and, and think about sweeping. So shall we table this for tonight? Or well, do you, they want don't, well, they, you don't want us to vote, right? You want it, right, no, right, you no. want it table? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. All right. Okay. I move to table. Okay. Well, should have made a comment about um, the, the crosswalks in general. Um, we're, <laughs> we're working on we a motion. We have a, we'll okay. a motion. Sorry. And then we'll, so I've got a motion, motion to withdraw. Motion to table the issue. A, motion to withdraw. Seconded. Any further discussion? Yes. Yeah, just, um, I just want to make a comment that so many people have zero respect for people in crosswalks. I've noticed lots of times, even pushing my kids across in a stroller, I'll be halfway across the road and someone will come just flying right by 30 miles an hour. Like anything that can help improve the visibility at crosswalks, I think is a very good thing. Thank you. And I, I think they'd be very nice. Need to vote. Looking. I do. We need to vote okay. on the motion to Okay, table. Mary. All those in favor of the motion to withdraw signifies saying aye. 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 So this will be automatically put on the agenda for the next meeting? No. June 4th. Okay, no. You'll have, to, you'll have to ask us for what you want. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Put it on. Yeah. Bring, bring and so forth. Beth will need to have that by the 29th? Um, Wednesday. Wednesday the 29th yes. for June 4th? Yes. That's an easy fix. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Okay. You want to talk benches? That's the next one. Sure, that's the next. Okay, I'll propose a motion to approve the $7,000 requested to purchase new benches with the condition that the design be approved by the Village Design Review Board. Yeah. And they have it. Motion's Second been made. Motion. And second is any further discussion? I have discuss some discussion. Did the Du Bois and King, uh, whatever, study, did they? Give us locations where they thought benches should go. No, they not didn't. specific ones. No, they didn't. No, they didn't. Why didn't the locations they? were determined by us and. Um,
consulting with Jack Rossi, who's a landscape architect and who does all the work in, a lot of work in town. So these will replace some and be additions in other places, they, they're correct? They're going to replace the ones. The only, the only one, 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 one they're not going to replace is the one around the tree. Okay. Which should the, the rest of them, we're going to replace them all. Would you, you like to know where they're going? Yes. Yeah, so where we're proposing? Eight, eight of them on the green. Go ahead. Yeah. I'm sorry. Beth, go ahead. Um, we had uh, two in front of um, the former Bentleys because we noticed that people use those a lot, um, yeah, local people. Um, eight on the green, two at on near the pie area, um, and two at Tribu Park. Can I, would you also change the location of the one behind the village quiet? Because when you sit in that, all you do is look at a sign, and I remember that was in the report, and I sat on that chair the other day, and it was silly. I believe that's owned by the historical society. Hmm? That's a wooden bench, it's just, you have to relocate. Yeah. Is that a suggestion for a location that, that's feasible? What, what, yeah. what do you want? You want that one behind the town private? <coughs> yes, it's there. It, it, it's used it gets it's used a lot. It does get used. It gets used a lot. But it gets used. It's people awful. come, people go to the uh, butcher shop, get a sandwich, they yeah. sit there and well, eat it. Maybe that's because there's no other chairs. So I, I think, think if you found a better site for it, it, it would be used. Well, in the first place, I think it belongs to the oh, historical so society. Okay, I'll talk to Matt. Okay. Let him buy a new one. Okay. Yes. Well, so, can I ask a question? Yeah, sure you can. What happens to all those cast iron framed benches? We'll get to find places to tuck them someplace, Phil. Probably if you thought about maybe in front of um, the welcome center, you know, they're kind of out of the way a little right. bit. So you're not planning to just throw them away? No, no, no. Sell them? Yeah. Item. Mostly it's we'll the probably green, hide them, tuck them away someplace. The green rickety ones. Yeah. Yes, those are terrible. Yeah. They've given all they've got to give. They have. <laughs> if the board wanted to vote to get rid of them, they can be out of here as the expense. But those are like forty dollars a piece. I'm more concerned with the cast iron right. benches. If the board wants that to say we'll take we'll get rid of them, do it, please. Heavier the than ones. Yeah, they're heavier. Yeah. They're tough. No, I don't want it. The old rickety ones, yes, but those ones with the slats, the cast iron. Cast yes. iron and yes. those are good benches. Yes. And they can be fixed. Sure. And I will tell you that if you've looked on the green, <coughs> the octagonal, octagonal, whatever, the one around the tree yeah. Yeah. is needing serious work. Mm -hmm. it's, it, it, it gets rebuilt about every five years. Okay. We must be winter, on year five. Huh? Four. Next winter. As long as they're not plowing and sanding and salting every day. <coughs> and I'm sure maybe the East End could use a few yeah. leftover. I, I think you want some that people Yeah. yeah. But I think they take raising think. his hand. Yeah, yeah. Ken, I can't see Ken. He's hiding. Oh, I'm sorry. I just had a quick question. Are these replacing our existing benches, Phil? Yes. Yeah. Because I heard someone say they could stay out. And they that's not really the case. They can. They can. The teak wood, they can stay out year round. But what about snow removal? Like well, you mentioned in front of Bentley. Well, that's one clarifying. Like in front of Bentley's, no, not in the winter. Um, but what do you do with the benches in there now? Well, that's They're not out. Yeah. Those two belong to the Bentley's right, but, restaurant. But what did Bentley's do? Did they leave them out? I don't know. No, they don't. No, they don't. Because I went down through, I personally go through there with the loader and pull the snow. If we're replacing what the town does now, it's a non-issue. But if we're adding any location that where we pull meters, the benches wouldn't stay out year-round. So they were talking out. about eight on the green, two at Bentley's, which right. probably would have to be moved inside. Two at Pi and two at Tribal. Could that be on the lawn at Pi? Or on the, the, the concrete. Maybe on the concrete. On the concrete. Because yeah, we don't, I, you don't own the lawn. No, we don't. <laughs> There's another good area, and that's the Legion. On yes. The, on but the that's up to them. Yeah, yeah but they, I'm sure they would let you okay. put one there. Yeah, yeah. On Talk the Legion. We can make it. Because people walk down that area. Sure, so we'll walk them. We we'll were only them. trying to make life easy. All right. Yeah. Why not? So, so we have really a motion on the floor and mm -hmm. been seconded to approve the benches. Mm -hmm. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. The ayes have it. Okay, anything else, EDC questions? No. Right. Yeah. Thank you.
Oh, yeah. thank, thank you, Joe. The thank only thing you, I will Sally. say is, so our visioning um, process is starting. We have a kickoff meeting for visioning next, and this is for the people on TV, next Wednesday evening at 5.30 at Billings Farm. And so we're going to sort of introduce the project, but we're also going to do some lightning rounds so people can talk about community projects and people can find out what's going on, um, as well as sort of discuss <coughs> how we're going to, it's going to be a fairly long process for the next several months to gather information. And then our consultant will help put it all together, and there'll be another um, opportunity for the community to weigh in on which, how prioritize projects. And may I ask you another question? Mm -hmm. um, your June 6th meeting, is that when you're going to take public input about um, what you discussed last Monday at that meeting yes. where we were not yes. invited yes. to yes. talk? Well, I, I think that, so at our last, we had a special EDC meeting last week, and that was sort of just, and I think I, I summarized it here, is to discuss the priorities and the progress. And it really was just an information gathering. And I don't, I don't know how formal a presentation we'll have for that meeting, but it certainly will be on the agenda. There will be an opportunity for public comment at that meeting. I'm, I'm not. I'm, I'm we not sure. Talk last I know, but week. I don't know. I don't know if they'll. I don't know if there'll be a formal something to comment on yet. Okay. So it would be. I'm hoping there will be, but I'm not promising. All right. But thank yes, you. You can definitely. That's you can always comment. Thank you. Oh, sorry. Any. Uh, <laughs> Anything else for Sally? No. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Yep. Thanks. Anything? Uh, old business. What do we have under old Sorry. business? Beth is shaking her head. Nothing. <laughs> New business. So. I'm yes. sorry, I do have an old business one, but I don't know if I can bring it up because it. I wanted to give you an update on the roads project, the roads and curbs project that we proposed 12 months ago, and Ray and I have done a little work on it with Ken. So, um, as one of the initiatives that we put out there last March, remember we said we're going to look at the um, emergency services building, we're going to look at the town hall, <coughs> and we're going to look at roads and sidewalks. So, Ray, myself, and Ken have been looking at our sidewalks, and we're working on a project that will come up with a total price that would bring our roads up to a good standard and our sidewalks up to a good standard with the idea that we know what it costs <coughs> to do these things so that we can say, okay, so roads last six to ten years, so we need to be allocating this much money every year. So we're working on that number and we'll come up with something this summer. And then we're also working on the work that needs to be done before the road is repaved, uh, Route 4, 106 and Elm Street to find a price for the curbs, for replacing the curbs, with the idea that if the road is going to be replaced, then the curb work should be done this year and next year, so that the road is not disturbed when that is improved. So Ken is writing a proposal with uh, to go out for bid so that we can find a price for doing that work. That was all I wanted to say. Good. Uh, I'll just give you an update on um, the emergency service building. Uh, the fire chief and the uh, uh, ambulance coordinator and the police chief have been working uh, to come up with an architect on what the needs are of the town for the next few hundred years for equipment and safety <coughs> and they're working on that. Um, they're almost finished as soon as they have that um, proposal ready they're going to make a presentation to the select board Great. which I suspect will be probably sometime between now and mm, I want to say hopefully the first of July yeah. uh, it's been a long slow <coughs> process for them because there are so many regulations for that type of building both federal state and OSHA VOSHA uh, it's uh, hazardous materials waste. Uh, the police department has got some weapons and um, uh, drugs and uh, lockups and there's just a, a whole slew of, if you're going to do it, you, you have to follow these regulations. It's been a long process. But, so uh, hopefully they're almost finished. 
and they'll have a report for us sometime between now and the 1st of July and show us their plan and lay it out for us. And I don't expect we'll have a cost by that time, but at least we'll see the plan. So, um, so perhaps I should finish this with the town hall. And um, so we haven't done any more work on the town hall. We're waiting for the structural engineer's report. And that was promised the end of May. Is that still on? We, the, uh, whoever it is that um, Katie, the structural engineer from Burlington, hired to do the test borings, that machine breaks down more than a street sweeper because they haven't been bored yet. So we do not have the data from test boring to tell you, to give an inclination of why we're listing toward the river. So do they have a new time estimate for us? Uh, soon, but they keep promising soon. Mm. They made a joke about it the other day. Said nobody answered me. Must be you don't believe me. <laughs> we have been told next Tuesday, next Wednesday, next Tuesday, next Wednesday. It's back to next Wednesday, and we'll <coughs> this boring machine is so rather problematic. Uh, I'm all part of. The article proved at town meeting a year ago that to pay for the new boilers is paying for some energy retrofits in the building, and that is, is going along ice. Okay. I get good news. Okay. Everybody happy? Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, yeah. We'll move on to the next item on the agenda, which is the Boy Scouts uh, request <coughs> for uh, to hang plaques. At the town hall? Um, I'm going to represent that request. I'm on the um, council board of Boy Scouts here in Woodstock. And the letter is from Matt Maxim, who is our scoutmaster. There are two plaques right now. They are in the town clerk's office. And they have the names and dates of high level award winners. Um, in the Woodstock area since 1922 and um, we have kept it up and gone back and has gotten the history and there's a little plate on e on the plaques for each scout who has been successful including Dwight Camp and his brother and other people whom we all know here and some people from Barnard and the area. And Matt would like to hang those somewhere here at Town Hall because there's so many local people involved. They're in the town clerk's office if anyone wants to see them. They're probably together would take up the width of this table. And he's asking if we could hang them in the town hall above the mailboxes in the lobby, which is as you come in and go to the right toward the town clerk's office, it would be right there on the, on the right. He would hang them. He would make sure they're clean, well-kept, et cetera. And if you have a better suggestion for a location, he would be open to that. Again, he will do the work related to their positioning and upkeep. So and I will abstain from voting on this. I will. You don't have to. No. I'll make a motion to approve the request to hang the plaques in the town hall. I'll second it. I guess I can. Motion has been made and seconded. Any further discussion on the Boy Scouts hanging their plaques in the lobby? All those in favor say aye. 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 The ayes have it. Thank you. Okay. The next is the uh, request for Green Mountain Power. Uh, I have a question about this one. Yeah. Is this just replacing the wires rather than any pole work? I don't think they're going to replace any wires without making taller poles. If the uh, poles go in the same place, they're just different, higher poles. Bigger poles, yeah. Yeah, they might be two feet from the f existing one, but they're. So, if they replace the poles, then I would, I want, I'd like the old poles to be taken away, because right. the current practice seems to be to put a new pole in and leave the old pole there. 
and that's not acceptable in this residential it, it area. It is not acceptable, and we have no control over it. Then no new poll. Then what? No new poll? Yes. Because who wants the new poll? Who wants two polls everywhere? So, nobody does, and it's... I get involved when people ask me to get involved. I have to get the Public Service Board involved because they regulate the utilities. The problem is telephone. Greenmount Power will come in and they'll put the new poles up. They'll put their wires on the new poles. They'll chop off the top of the pole down to cable television and telephone and there it will sit. And they're not responsible <laughs> because state law requires the utilities to share poles. Anything so if you just deny the permit, and I felt it was denied because until you can come in with some concrete promise from... But Green Mountain Power cannot promise telephone. So if we say no to this request, what happens to the electricity supply? I <coughs> think it would stay the same as it is. I, so why do they want to replace yeah, them? Yeah, good question. Why do they want they to They want to go? I don't know. It's not... So the poles are either in poor condition or it's a plan they've got to raise all their poles? So I went to this area to look yeah. at the poles yeah. and these poles are very close to houses. They're in uh, yards which are not very big. It's, yeah. I don't think it's an option to have two poles. So until somebody can make better assurances, I won't approve a vote to you do won't, this. I have, I have tried that in the past, exactly what you're and it falls on deaf ears. They'll promise you the moon and the stars, but they cannot okay. deliver. Well, then they can't have permission to put it's, the I got no, I got no objection. I'm not shilling for the power plant. I'm just trying to tell you. There was, all right, I'll give you an example. It was last year in the late <coughs> winter that a pole broke in half on Mount Avenue. I was six, eight months before I could get the Public Service Board to come down on the telephone people as a safety issue. Mm -hmm. Sending them pictures, letters, emails, phone calls. I, I can't move these people. And they had a million excuses. Um, so no, I've got, I think it's a smart move to deny them. There is nothing. The Public Service Board can't move them. I can't, so just deny it. You'll be happier. Okay. And then when you're driving west, you go by the high school farmer's market. Those two in front of the fire station there, they've been there years and years and years. Chopped off, but the phone never moves. <coughs> They keep selling these phone companies and the new buyers seem to have less money because they spent all their money buying Buy old copy. It's worse than ever with the telephones. No, I think that, I think you're very wise. I, I'm not sure how wise we are, but I think it's going to be an interesting challenge. And I think we'll probably... Well end up losing in the end, they'll come and do as they please because they are, they'll get public service behind them. And no, they can't. They <coughs> will. Yeah, they will. Now, but they that's will. not to say, Jill, they'll get them behind them. that they brought this request to the wrong board. Yes. They may well have brought, brought this to the wrong board because yes, the town does street maintenance for the village, Oh, that's but right. the that's village right. has yeah. is still in control, so that so I'm not going to tell Kayla that. <laughs> no further discussion. So, do we need to formally <coughs> deny it? I would like that. I could say the board okay. denied it because if it's not of up to us to deny it, if it's a village mm -hmm. issue mm -hmm. in the vill if it's in the village, I see no. Okay. If it's in the village, I see we. No it's it's a village problem. Yeah, we got another one here that's a village issue too. Yeah. That we aren't going. I'll, to I'll check the map and see if any of it's in the town. So for okay. now, I guess you can table it. Okay. 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 Just table it.
Just table it? Yeah. Okay. That hung around my desk for four or five days before I decided to move it up. Okay. The chain because I... All right, so we have a resignation from letter from Ron Miller. Uh, do we need, we need to approve this? Yes. No. Yes, we have to accept it, I see. Hey. I'll propose a motion well, to... He couldn't be. I'll propose a motion to accept Ron Miller's resignation as uh, the town representative on the board of Norman Williams Public Library. And I'll second that. Ron's a great representative. The motion has been made and seconded to approve this letter of resignation. Um, any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 I'd just like to mention that that's because he's going to become president of the yeah. Board of Library Trustees. Right. <laughs> So I'll run, we'll run an ad looking for a new representative. So the Upper Valley Solid Waste, we have to appoint. I make a motion that we elect Phil Swanson representative. Okay. Yeah. Shall we, um, we propose an alternate? Sure. He served us well for quite a few years. Have a I would alternate. propose Ken as our alternate. Sure. And then he can be recognized if need be. Sure. See, only one of us could oh. vote. No, not can, he vote. can he though? He so, doesn't live not, in Woodstock. He's not a village. I uh, town represent Woodstock. I'll look into that. Uh, who is who? This is the Greater Upper Valley Solid Waste District, and the suggestion was Ken be appointed as an alternate to me. I'll look into that. If he's can do it, I would I would agree with that. If it's if we can do it, All if right. not, please come up with a alternate. All right, name for us. So do we have a motion? Um, to, uh, for uh, Phil. John made a motion to appoint Phil, and I seconded it. Motion's been made and seconded to appoint Phil as our as, as our rep. And we'll, we'll, we'll <coughs> follow up as an with the alternate. Okay. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 The ayes have it. Okay, the next one is the ambulance agreement. Yeah. So I'll propose a motion that we accept the ambulance service agreement between the town of Plymouth and the town of Woodstock, whereby Woodstock provides the town of Plymouth with 24-hour day ambulance service in exchange for a fee, money. And this is... Um Part of the town of Plymouth, correct? It's, it's half of Plymouth. Half of Plymouth. Okay, I'll second that motion. The motion's been made and seconded for the agreement for ambulance service for the town of Plymouth for our portion that we do. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 The ayes have it. Billings Park Commission has asked that we uh, table this until a later date. Okay. So good with me. Phil's already given <coughs> us a report on the licking covered, covered bridge, bridge. Unless something's happened between now and then. <laughs> um, um, I'm just waiting to see if Phil goes towards the bridge on the way home or if he goes <laughs> the right way. <laughs> I'm parking away to remind me. We'll see. <laughs> um, should we is where's the um, liquor too? I'm sure they're here about the liquor license. Should we? Where is that on the back? On the back. back. On the back. On the back. But yep. you have like three more items. Yep. Yeah. Okay. We're getting there. Okay. We got. Uh, <coughs> we need to schedule a hearings for the proposed zoning uh, amendments uh, that are in our packet. So. Um, Should I propose a motion? Sure. Please. So I'll propose. Can I do them both together? Or yes. Separately? Well, they're different. Are they different days? Yeah. They're Same different day. boards. Yeah. yeah. Same day. <coughs> no, they're both towns. Same day. Well, oh, they're both June yeah, 18th. Yeah. Yes, yeah. they are both June 18th. So I'll propose a motion to um, have public a public hearing on Section 526 Short Term Rental Amendment on June the 18th, and uh, to have a public hearing for Section 521 Multiple Low Occupancy Apartments on the same date, June 18th. Good. A second that motion. Motion's been made that we schedule the public hearings for June the 18th. And the 
Any further discussion? Been seconded. Any, yep. Any further discussion? I just want to make sure we've got this clarified. It's going to be during the select board, board meeting yes. at 6 p.m. Yeah. Just want to. Yes. Any further discussion? That's our regular meeting. All those in favor of the Aye. June 18th? Aye. 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 The ayes have it. Good. Now we have greater specs. I'll make a motion to approve the motor grading specs. I'll yes. second their motion. This will now be sent out <coughs> for bids, and then we'll get to look at everything again. Right. Okay. Motion's been made to accept the greater specs. The only thing I'd like to see was, yeah, was a <coughs> specifically mentioned here was the, the scarifier should be behind <coughs> the front axle. It says a front mounted scarifier, but it the should wing. be like the one you've got yeah, behind the front axle. Yeah, the, the wing, yeah. the way they had to set it up, John. Yeah. Yeah. It otherwise, you're going to take it off of the snowplow and all that business. That's junk. Yeah. Motion made in second. Yeah. Motion can, you, can, can you accommodate John's request? It has to be the way it's specified because of the wing and plow. Yeah. I can't do it the way our current one is. Okay. Okay. Motion's been made and seconded. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Ayes have it. Maybe Ken will take John and show him yeah. visibly. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. The Lincoln Street driveway uh, on there, that is uh, the, uh, in the village. village trustees have jurisdiction over uh, naming <coughs> streets and numbering streets, uh, numbering houses in the village, and that is a village street. So they'll take care of that, hopefully. <coughs> Truck permits? Yep. Are in your packet? Yep. No problem. I think I had seven of them. I read them over twice. They all look in order. I'll make a motion. We approve them. I'll second that motion. Motion's been made and seconded that we accept the overweight truck permits reviewed by John. Any further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 The ayes have it. Boy, there is a bunch of them in there. Yeah, there's seven. It's okay. You see, they all expired March yeah. 31st. So. so next one is the trade application by the Cuban Valley Inn. Cool. You want to come up? Oh, yeah, oh, sure. Come on. Come on down. <laughs> Thanks for waiting. <laughs> we leave the best. <coughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> okay. Speak. Okay, we want to have a parade. Okay. Um, <laughs> in honor of? In honor of just having fun, basically. So we kind of were discussing wanting to have a parade, and there has been a parade done on the first Saturday of August in South Woodstock before. One in 2007, and then another one, but we can't figure out. This, sorry, this was all being discussed with the Perkins Academy <coughs> okay. um, board, which is like the historical society. Mm -hmm. yeah, so originally we, were, we wanted to have a parade for the 4th of July, but then we decided that was conflicting with too many other activities. And then we looked back, and because we were all like, we, we remember that we have done parades before in South Woodstock. And so we found some photos of one from 2007 on the first Saturday of August. And then there was another one when I was a little child, but we're not sure if it was like 1995 or 1994, somewhere around there, there was also another parade that went right down 106 from the fire station. Then they turned around at the Kedron Valley in that big parking lot, and then they went back. So you're that's composing a, this for August 3rd? Yes, because that's, that's the first Saturday of August. And that being a state highway. Right. You know all that, you have to get Permission. Oh, so I didn't know that. Yeah. We got patrol. Okay, for, okay. patrol. For, to, for them to block it off. Yeah. yeah. We can't give you permission to okay. close 106. Okay. So we go to the state for permission okay. to close Correct, one. Correct, Phil? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Do you have to block it completely or can you have it halfway? We could probably do halfway. They'll let you block it off. They'll for a short okay. period of time. Okay, yeah. And it How could be really it? short. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Like, I mean, it could be a 30 minute parade. Yeah. It's right. just a couple people. Yeah, like, I'm sure. Yeah. And traditionally, they've done like, 
just a couple of cute, and there's a, the Reading 4-H wants to do something, you know, just very That's small great. little. Yeah. 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 Fourth of July, Reading has theirs. Yeah, and, exactly. and Heartland so, has theirs. Yeah. So right they'll, next they'll, yeah. But you just need to get okay, their, that I get did their not blessing. Know. Okay. We cannot mm -hmm. give you permission to close the road. Okay. So I don't know what you are asking for here. Uh, if you're asking for us to give you permission to yes. close the road. No, just the parade permit. Go ahead, have a parade. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I move to approve the parade for the King Alien and South Woodstock, provided they get a, a consent oh, yeah. from the state of Vermont to close Route 106. I second it. Motion's been made and seconded to give the Kedron Valley Inn and South Woodstock permission to have a parade. <laughs> Boy, that was worth you waiting for. You guys should all come, too. Yeah. 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 Once we get our permission from the state. That was all worth waiting for. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Okay. Okay. Thank, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> all right. Okay. Next is the bike and the Kellington Stage race. race has happened here for several years on Memorial Day weekend, usually on the Sunday. Yes, this is on the Sunday. Yeah. And it comes up over, it wow. comes um, Route 12 and then goes up over Prosper Road and turns right at the intersection of Prosper Road and Route 4 and goes right out of town. Yep. I move we approve that. I second it. Motion's been made and seconded that we approve the uh, enhancement for the bike and endurance race for Killington Stage Race uh, for the 26th. And then there's another one on the 22nd of June and one on the 20th of July. Um, Correct? Vermont. Right. Vermont Adaptive. This, um, What's the Vermont Adaptive one? Yeah. I didn't, that we is haven't a, had that before. That, yes, I think we've had it for the... Um, it's a bike thing, I think, isn't it? That comes, the yeah, the century trails, ride the is what it's been called ride. before. And it has come through Woodstock. They have a rest stop over by the elementary school. So if I'm looking at this letter here, it says that the Killington stage race Sunday the 26th. Yes. It doesn't mention any other, and it says they've talked with the chief and the sheriff doesn't mention, unless I haven't gone far enough, any other dates. No, no different that is, that's just okay. that. That's, that's just the that. whole thing. All right. Gotcha. Okay. All right. And then oh, this gotcha. is the different. This is I June 22nd up. to June 23rd, and I think it goes through here oh, on you. Saturday, which is the 22nd. I don't know about it. It's June 22nd. Yeah. Yep. Okay, I'm with you. And, and then it, again on July 20th. Well, that's, a, that's, that's the 100 a, mile, and yeah, that's another different that's in, thing. Are they all the same route? Um, no. 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 This one comes from Route 12. The other one, the event location is the Long Trail Brewery, so it comes oh, yeah, 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 east yeah, okay. on Route 4 yeah. and goes the other, I think this goes down 106. I'm not sure about that. Which one? Um, June 22nd, 23rd. There are different loops, 60 mile, 40 mile, 100 mile. Starts at the long trail. Goes through, I think it goes. It must go through Route 4, otherwise. You could, yes, it comes down Route 4, I know. But, um, where does it go through Woodstock? Starts and That's ends. I believe it goes through Woodstock right down here and goes uh, around the green and then right on 106. But I don't know how it gets back to the Long Trail Brewery. Maybe through Plymouth. Oh, yes. Through it goes up over Redding, Tyson Road, I believe. Okay. <coughs> I think there's oh. one that does that. Oh, that's a long. They have three different length rides, right. including a 600 mile, I think. Yeah. 160 miles. 160 yeah. miles and 40 miles. miles. So the only one that they've talked to about with the police department is the one on May 26. None of these other letters say that they have, they've already talked, they've about talked that. To, to our police department. Um, 
out. Right, so, you know. No, they, if they don't write it, then we can't yeah. assume anything. And we would have to approve it with that kind so, of a caveat or a condition that they if they go through speak the speak with the police and they do come through the village. So he. That would be a condition of your permission. Yeah. All right, I move we approve the Vermont Adaptive <coughs> Charity Ride on June 22nd, contingent upon contact with the Village Police Department. Yep. I'll second it. Motion's been made and seconded that we approve that one for the with approval of the Village Police Chief or the Town Police Chief. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 So we still have one more. Yes. Historically, the Vermont Adaptive Ski and Sports has come through Woodstock since in inception, which is, which one, this is the 31st annual. And this starts, it says on the front page. Okay, is this, the is this still start in Reading? Yeah. It starts in Reading comes up, it comes over through um, Garvin Hill, Taftsville Covered Bridge, it goes right. up toward um, right. Palm Frit, yeah. comes down route, it comes over comes down the Garvin back. Garvin Hill, Heartland Hill, Happy Valley Road, yes. Taftsville Bridge, if it's open, yeah. Route <laughs> 4, West Woodstock, yeah. Austin Road, Prosper Road, a map of the route is included along with a permit application. And this ends, I think, back in um, Reading somewhere. Doesn't say that. West, uh, beginning in West Windsor, and I think that it used to be at Smoke Rise, wherever that used to be. Smoke Rise Farm. Yeah. Yes. Smoke Rise Farm. That's up in South Woodstock. Okay. Way up That's top it. hill. So, we need approval for that one. And this includes. Um, the constable is usually at Sheriff's the station. The constables, yeah. Do we know what they're going to do if they can't cross the covered bridge? They cannot cross the covered bridge. The, the Lincoln know. covered bridge. Yeah. They don't know that yet, yeah. probably. Right. They're going to have to change the route. Yeah. I'll, the right, I'll get home. I'll ride them tomorrow. Okay. The back, they always cross the Lincoln covered bridge. Yep. So, we've approved the Killington stage race. And we haven't approved uh, the June, the July 20th one yet, have we? Well, they're going to have to change their route. Yeah. And we'll have time to, to review that I'll again on June 18th. We'll be back May. next month. Okay. June 18th. we got plenty of time. Okay. All right. All right. All right. I'm confused. So um, I thought we, we approved that one. We approved this one, okay. subject to them getting in touch with the police. Right. Why don't we approve this one? Because so the Lincoln Covered Bridge is how they get over they to get a different route. towards South Woodstock. They're going to have to change that because the Lincoln Covered Bridge will not be open by mid-July. We need to approve their route. <coughs> okay. okay. We've got to adjust that. All right. So now we have liquor permits that we can uh, approve. Shine Associates. And where is it? They're right there. Where is that? Oh, yeah. Very patient. <laughs> Sorry, you laughed. Very interesting hearing all the other stories. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the street Thanks. sweeper was very Thanks for yeah. saying yeah. that. <laughs> but it's free, yes. and it's free. Yeah. No charge. We said we were going to come back next week, on next <laughs> month. <we're back>. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Take my place. <laughs> okay. So, we have... Permit from them to serve liquor, alcohol. No. This, this is the, go ahead, please, Clay. After 20 years of running Woodstock Beverage, Michael, at the age of 80, has decided to retire and <laughs> hand the reins over to me, um, which he's been grooming me for the last two and a half years. And so we're looking to transfer his beer and wine license from his company's name to my company's name. Okay. And what is your company? Shine Associates. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so <coughs> usually we ask about pay payments and things up to date. Oh, mm -hmm. they are. Mike's okay. good. Yeah. Right. So I'll, pro I'll make a motion to approve the application for the liquor license for Shine Associates. 
I'll second it. Motion has been made and seconded to approve liquor license for Shine approved. Dr. Associates. Yeah, Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank Aye. Thanks for waiting. Thank you. Well, it's good the transaction has everybody had. Okay. There you go. <laughs> it's time to have a drink, right? Samples for us to make yeah. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. Okay. Board of Sewer Commissions. Okay. The Shire. 46 Pleasant Street. You're free to go. <laughs> Very patient. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for waiting all that time. So they're going to convert, convert what has been a three-bedroom space into a six to six hotel rooms. It used to be owner's quarters. Yeah. That would be three more, right? Yeah. And Phil has written a letter, I believe, saying that... Given that capacity. We have the capacity, yeah. and they've paid the fee. Oh, they have paid. Uh, yes. They have paid the fee. Yes. Uh, yes. The building that was the Everybody that is presented tonight in the for sewer connections increase has paid by there okay. before you. Okay. So we have that one. So can we do all three of them together? I don't see why yeah. we can't. The letter to Patrick Winnie has got the wrong name on. <laughs> okay. Is it okay to use it as is? is yeah, because I will send him another letter. Okay. Oh. So I'll propose a motion to approve the three applications. One from the Shire Woodstock, one from Patrick Winnie, and one from John King, as requested. Second that motion. The motion's been made. <coughs> Seconded. Any further discussion to approve all three? Any? Motion's been carried. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Um, should we um, go to executive session now, or do you want to finish the rest of the agenda? Let's finish the. Finish the agenda. Let's see what okay. have we got. We have the financial statement, approval of minutes. Citizen comments. Let's go into executive session. Okay, may we go into executive session? I'm still not sure it's appropriate. Can we ask um, Just questioning on whether we can. Yes, you can. Okay. I have looked into that question in the past. Okay. Yes, you may. I move we um, go into executive session to discuss I'm our applicants of earlier this evening. Joe. Joe. What? Go, go street, sweet your, sweet your streets. Sweet your streets. <laughs> Get your broom <laughs> out, Joe. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Okay, we're in executive aye. session. Yeah. The meeting. Um, you all fired up, Macy? Yes, I'm rolling now. Go ahead, start again. Okay, so which one are we doing first? In the order we interviewed. Okay. In the order of the interview. So I'll make a motion to approve Glenn Parent as the lister to serve until the next election in March. I'll second that motion. Motion is made and seconded for Glenn Parent to fill in as a lister until elections in March. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 And the next one is? Um, select board. And select board. I'll move that we appoint Ray Bourgeois to serve as select person until the March election. I'll second that. Motion's been made and seconded for Ray Bourgeois to finish, to fill in the select board's petition till position until the next election. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 I'd like to thank you, Brad, for um, coming forward and, vo and uh, volunteering for this post. And I would love to encourage you to get more involved so that you can um, be appointed at a future date. Absolutely. Or not uh, voted in, actually. Yes. We rarely make appointments. There are meetings here just about every Tuesday and Wednesday night, um, Board of Development Review Board and Planning Commission. Come and listen and see. and. Find where your interest lies, and maybe you'll run for select board again. 
village um, trustees. Oh well, yeah, you live in the village. She lives in the yeah. village. Yeah, you, you might want to be. A, yeah. If Betty you don't Buffett have to was. run, if you could stay for a little while after the meeting. If you don't have to leave right away, oh, could okay. you stay for a little while? Buster okay. Lewis's house. Okay, so the next one is our right. um, Fred, cemetery our commissioner. Cemetery commissioner. Yeah. You want to make a motion for? You made one earlier for. Did Fred. you make a motion for Fred Barr? Yeah, Fred oh, Barr. Okay. Yeah. Seconded. Yes. Motion has been made and seconded that Fred Barr fill the position of cemetery commissioner until March. Right. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 The ayes have it. Okay. Um, I move we appoint Tom Debevoise as ta town auditor until the March election. Second. Motion has been made and seconded for Tom Debevoise to fill the position of auditor till the next election. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, ayes have it. Right. We have no appointment to make for I, anything else tonight. I think we did our job. I think we did all of that. Okay. Thanks, Beth. So the next thing we have is to review, review the financial. And uh, do we have any citizens? Any citizens' comments? This gentleman. <laughs> this this gentleman's uh, uh, appoint uh, attempt to be a. Just let me remind me of the story. Uh, I applied to be on the planning commission, and I went to the trustees meeting. And John Osley asked me, "How long have you lived in town?" I said, three days." <laughs> I said, I don't think that qualifies. So <laughs> yeah, Beth, I just wanted to let people know that um, with the help of the Rotary Club, Coda and Coda, um, and Surf Pro. Uh, Pro. Pro, and some other citizens, that the flower baskets are hung, and let's hope we don't have another fr a frost. I found them going up this morning. And Thank Elijah you. has been contracted to. Good. Good. Feed in water them. So Great. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So then Thank you. we just need to the financial statement and uh, minutes. And minutes. I guess there's no other citizens' comments. So. No. I have some questions about the uh, finances. Yeah, please. Yeah. So we are not all the way through the year. We're right. May 15, and we've got a month and a half to go. But some of our um, some of our categories of expenditure are over a hundred percent and I'm wondering why. Well, let's, which ones? Start at the top. Culture and recreation. Okay, so that will go. There's an entire group of uh, Expenses. I don't have my chart of accounts with me, but I'll look into that. Well, maybe you could look at what. So that we can look at the percentages expended yes. very easily, and it might be good to come prepared to the meeting. Oh, where, yeah. where, <coughs> where are we, and where are we? Your best estimate of where we're going to be by July the first. Okay, that That's what's really important. That will not. That two thousand three hundred eighty-one seventy will not ex go, get any bigger. Okay. Other things like the library contribution, the rec center contribution. Have we been billed like for flags for two years instead of one or something like I, that? One of them, I noticed one of our giftees, I think I need to get some money back for it. So the next one that's overspent is your select board, and that's going to be overspent in legal fees. So more worrying is that um, we are 88% of the way through the year, and we're 92% of our budget. So the question really is, are we going to hit our budget this year, or are we going to be overspent? Okay, well, as you know, it is a hard winter for expenses. If boys basically plowing, sanding, and salting every day. Your spring work from that flood is cost money every day. We do have now 
some income from FEMA that will show up on the books. There will be accounts that will not be overspent. So, for example, we've other years the insurance <coughs> has been overspent. We've paid the LCT for all the quarters of insurance, so that won't be a surprise. Do you think that we're going to get to the end of the year within our budget? Not within your budget, but you might. We spent way, way too much on winter maintenance. We, for me to make a blanket statement like that, it was, it was a hard, hard, hard winter. So what happens if we go over budget? Essentially, nothing. You have enough money in the bank and capital reserve that we're not in trouble. But you know, it takes some capital reserve. You won't really even take it. You'll just eventually other years will get caught up. But you're not behind. You're not you're not living on borrowed money. You're borrowing it from yourself. Right, but we are impacting the capital how we can spend the capital reserve. Yes. I can't say you're not. I don't know what your plans are. Essentially, recently you went away so, from paying cash. Okay. So that's a concern. And I wonder if there's any opportunities to reduce overtime or any of our expenses so that we can come in where we promised to come in. Well, did you say reduce overtime? Yeah. In and a, we just it, talking about I know, but, but this is what happens in a corporation. You have a, you make a promise and you try to come into that promise. And when there's a gap, about this time of year, is the time to say we have to make some changes rather than have a surprise on July 1. Well, well. Okay. All right. I have very good. I think the, uh, your concerns are well taken, but we, you know. It's good financial management, and I think it needs to be done. I will tell you that when you make your next annual budget, that we pay more attention to what, where we expect winter maintenance to be. People are much more demanding now than they were 10 years ago. So it's very interesting though, isn't it? People are demanding, but they won't pay more taxes. Well, you can't they have don't both. say that. They no, they didn't say that. Well, this board built its budget on the basis of no more than a 3% increase. Okay. Based yeah, on well, comments. Yep, and because, well, okay. Um, then you may have to do different next time. We will, what I would propose is we take either a, whatever you're comfortable with, either a three year average or a five year <laughs> average for sand, for salt, for overtime. And then you've got, this is, this is what it costs to keep people happy these days. I'm, I'm not sure that we can do that. Well. I, I mean, I, the, the street I see all the time is North Street. Yes. I really don't believe we need it sanded so often. I really think that the time might come when we have to look at doing things differently and spending less money. And I know we're not discussing budget tonight, but no, it's con this is, the budget is concerning. This, okay. They're not the budget, the expenses are concerning. Okay. So, we have to approve these minutes? Yes. I have reviewed the minutes a couple yes. times. Let's see. I'll propose a motion to approve the minutes of April the 16th and May the 14th. I'll second that motion. The motion has been made and seconded to approve the minutes of April 16th and May 14th. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those against? Ayes have it. Can't be against anything at this hour. Yeah, I know. 
Um, what's this one at the back? I'm sorry. This is at the back of my packet, and I, I, I saw it. that too. Oh, I don't know what it is. It says oh. copy. Ken had given that to me just before the meeting, and I don't know if you guys need to even approve it, but he said something about it. Oh. I don't know, Phil. Oh, this this driveway permit for Peterkin Hill. Does they, the select board need to approve this? That driveway permit on <coughs> Peterkin Hill. I went up with Ken today, uh, this afternoon. And we looked at it, and he gave them all the specs, and so I make a motion we a, we approve the. Oh, I see. There's the some permit. conditions here. Uh, well, as as such, I can't approve a permit until they get it done, right, Phil? They okay. get a letter that says you can go to work. Yeah. And build according to these <coughs> specifications, and when you're done, right, if you do it right, you get a permit. We. We uh, looked it all over and yeah. approved it uh, today. Okay. These are the conditions so, that they add to it. I the other one on uh, okay. Churchill, no, we haven't approved that yet. So can I say, I don't like this. If you want, I, I like to drive to the place. I like a little bit more than... I think the select board normally doesn't approve them putting the driveway in. It's always been most of the permits we've done can fill... John go out to look at them, then Phil signs off on a letter saying, "Go ahead. These are the conditions. Fill the driveway." What, what don't specs. you like, Phil? I like I like time to uh, look at something. Nice. So, but, but I think this might be my mistake. I think maybe I didn't see it, or did I just get it? No, they just got it like five minutes. Before well, they're not going to get a permit tonight. So it's anyway. not relevant. So right. We don't have to table Absolutely. it. You can. He, the, he's going to write him a letter, tell him they can do it according to these conditions. conditions. One of those conditions will be that Jill has to approve that. <laughs> and, uh, I'd, be, I'd say go ahead, give him the letter added, with the conditions. Okay. And from I think we went over it pretty solid with them today. So. Oh, with the owners? Okay. I need a motion to adjourn. So moved. Motion has been made. Second. And seconded to adjourn. All those in favor say aye. 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 Ayes have it.